That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I need to remember what I just said about animation. <laughs> and we are live again. <laughs> Hello, Look everybody. Look at this stuff. Isn't it shit? Does it is shit. What is that song number? from, by the way? She's been singing this since we decided we were going to do this video. What is that song from? Really? You don't know the parody? I've never no. heard it. That's why we were asking. <laughs> no, I know, well, I, I know what it's a up. parody of. It's I, a little bit. <laughs> I know it's a parody of that, but who did the parody? I did. Oh, you made it up? I made it up. Oh, nice. <laughs> you know what? I like it more now. Sing it all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I'm kind of scared of copyright, but okay. <laughs> It's a parody. We won't fuck with co copyright. It's all right. Maybe, yeah. maybe nerdy end of the video. <laughs> I like that you read it. Uh, wrote it. Read it. That's the time type of day this is gonna be. <laughs> you know, honestly, fuck effort. This is the Disney live action remake video. So why should we put effort towards it at all? Because <laughs> Disney hasn't done it for any of the live action remakes. I mean, you know, one or two, maybe. Yeah, that's, that's a fair point. <laughs> I am Dr. Neil Tobias. Welcome to Disney Plus, pals. I'm joined by Jack, and I'm joined by Cher. I pointed I'm putting in less body. effort in my lighting setup now. Go let's, ahead. Let's, let's no, what, Jack, just, just go ahead and just mess up your room if you want to. Let's, let's get some ugly stuff <laughs> I can put in the background. Uh, here, I'll just do the whole video out of frame. There we go. So how are you guys? Allergies. <sighs> Good before we had to restart filming this. <laughs> allergies. Hello, mother. Great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you have allergies. This is the best video to have allergies for. Friends, the Disney live action remakes are in. <laughs> Hi, Sheriff Bob. The Disney live action remakes are in large supply, and there are more on the way because we just love them. We just really like having them around. My favorite movie is. God, I don't want to say Maleficent. Uh, so... I, I thought you didn't like the Maleficent one. I don't like Maleficent. That's why I didn't want to say it. But oh. I love it, I guess. That's the bit. <laughs> I'm confused. Uh, we all are. So, <laughs> anyways... This, this remake, these remakes, this Disney... Listen... There's a ton of them. So this video is going to be kind of meaty. There's there's literally one coming out next week. Did you guys know that? One's coming out Peter, next week. Peter Pan and Wendy. Peter Pan and Wendy, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've seen more ads for it recently. That makes sense. And then The Little Mermaid comes out Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy, I believe, comes out the following week. So, like, that's a weird release schedule. But I think... Peter Pan's only on Disney Plus, so it makes yep. sense, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I've heard some people have different opinions, specifically Tinkerbell and Peter Pan. Mm -hmm. We yeah. we are here to talk about how we feel about some of the old remakes briefly. Then we're going to go through all of the ones that aren't out yet, and then we're going to talk about what we fear for future ones. <laughs> because... <laughs> Well, with Moana being announced, like, that means anything could happen, man. Like, She's I, not even 10 years old. She's not even 10 years old yet. Yeah, Tangled it. is older, and Tangled doesn't have one yet. So I almost promise you Tangled is on the way. I'm wondering, mm -hmm. Frozen, Frozen turns 10 this year. I'm surprised they haven't done a live action remake. <laughs> oh, they're gonna. The, if they're yeah. doing Moana, they're gonna do Frozen. They're in, not going to let that one go. In fact, no, Frozen's I, a certainty. I wouldn't be surprised if the reason they're doing Moana is to test the waters for Frozen. Like, literally, to see if people will watch right? it. Literally, mm. right? They're literally testing the waters. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. I, Say, oh, here, here, here's, a, here's a live action remake of a more recent film. In mm Kanto. -hmm. People didn't think that was too recent? <laughs> okay, we have to green light for Frozen. A project which, again, I'm sure has already been green light. <laughs> what would happen if Encanto got remade? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that scene with the donkeys is going to be gnarly if it ever gets remade. <laughs> Jack, Jack, it's going to be okay. Did we're, I break you? We're going to do this video, and then we never have to talk about them again. But I, want, I like Bruno. Until they come out, and then we have to review them, which means <laughs> we will be talking about them again. 
You shouldn't be happy, Jack. You should be upset. I'm upset. <laughs> I'm but... smiling through the pain. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. So, anyways, let's let's charge right into it. How do we feel about these remakes? In my opinion, the best one is uh, fucking. I just said it earlier, and now I've forgotten it. Uh, Christopher Robin. Robin. Yeah, I, I think that's the best one for me because it's not really a remake. It's just another Winnie the Pooh movie. Yeah, I think I, I'd consider it more of like a, more of a sequel. Mm -hmm. Like Hook being a sequel to Peter Pan instead of calling Hook a remake doesn't fit. I think. I, I'd agree with that. Although Disney, I believe, calls it a Disney live action remake. Like it's still in the category, so okay. like I still count it. But, like 102 Dalmatians. Well, that's, well that's technically. Not a yeah, wait, wait, what are you I talking about Mary about? Poppins? I'm surprised they didn't say Mary, Mary Poppins Returns as a. Oh well. But that was live, live action about. remake. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> live action. But a sequel, though, but, you know. All of the penguins are real now. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> the penguins are real, but everything else is animated. <laughs> that would be. Honestly, I'd watch that movie. <laughs> Just you real know, life penguins. Penguins, Mr. Popper's penguins. Uh, Jack, how, how do you feel about the live action remakes? How you doing? I feel that I love Mr. Popper's penguins. I haven't watched that film in so long. Cute. No, the Disney live action remakes. I think it is a fine idea to do a live action remake of an animated film, mm -hmm. but you have to have a reason for why you are changing the medium. Mm -hmm. When you do. I can't think of an example off the top you, of my head. You brought up but Jack say and they the ever did, Beach. Say they ever do an animated remake of mm. Pirates of the Caribbean. Never will, but say they do. You can get so much more creative with, like, the motion of the skeleton pirates. Mm. The Kraken can be so expressive when you don't have to make it look like it's a real thing. Oh, yeah. You can bend things, you can break things in animation that you can do in real life. You look at a lot of the classic... Go, go back to the Mickey Mouse. A lot, a lot of the early Steamboat Willie, the squash and stretch, the rubber hose style of animation. Now imagine that someone in a mouse costume. They, they can't do the same motions, you can't do the same expressions. Uh -huh. Animation is a fantastic medium, I love it so much. I'm the token animation guy here. But when you take an animated film and go, okay, we're going to redo it in live action. You're not necessarily going to make it better. And I think the consensus is for all of these, the, anim the, the original animated one's better. Mm. You, you brought up in, in the earlier video, which is lost to time now, chat, uh, Jack brought up James and the Giant Peach and how... Yeah. Mm? Well, uh, so what I was saying on that... Mm? Is so that that is a Disney animated film and it's stop motion. It's directed by Henry Selick, just like The Nightmare Before Christmas, which they're remaking. Why? We'll get into that. <laughs> and I, I, I have the same similar point for that one. In James and the Giant Peach, the character designs of a lot of the bugs are distinctly non humanoid. Mm -hmm. And they can do so, this, you can do things in animation that you just can't in live action without them being CGI characters. In which case, it's not live action, it's still animated. What are you doing? Cough, cough, the Lion King remake. Yeah, I'm... Um, why? Yeah. And it still made money. <laughs> Animation has its strengths, live action has its strengths. Play to them. Don't take this story that worked so well in one and try and redo it in the other unless you're going to play to those strengths. Beauty and the Beast. Which... I, I may disagree with you on that. <laughs> Say what I think is one of my favorites, the original remake of 101 Dalmatians. The puppies, the dogs, oh, they're so cute. That 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 is what they're playing on here is, they're so adorable. And also... Glenn Close is fucking terrifying. Mm. But <laughs> whereas in the original, okay, they're, they're animated dogs and they can have them behave and, and talk. project more emotion onto them with the eyes and motions and everything. They're playing with, this is the strength of this and this is the strength. It, that works well. 
and I, the art style of the original 101 Dalmatians I could talk about all day that's one that I think works the rest of them okay. I said about Alice in Wonderland okay. I have my own issues with how the style of that film and everything sorry if I keep talking I'm just going to keep talking no you keep going just to <laughs> summarize I prefer the animated versions of every film that's been made so far I am 70% sure I'm going to enjoy the animated versions of all the films yet to be adapted and remade you don't think Lilo and Stitch will finally win you over? <laughs> I, I mean, it, 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 that will entirely... I don't mean, the casting announcements are <laughs> concerning. Oh, yeah. That it will entirely depend on Stitch. Yeah. They put so much money into making Stitch work. And that's that's got to be but, uh, hard design to make I'm not holding my breath. I, I'm kind of in an interesting boat because I've always been kind of fascinated by the idea of cartoons going into live action. Like, I, I have a soft spot for the old Scooby-Doo movies that came out. Um, I, I always like it when it happens. Yet, for some reason, maybe because of the quality of said product... I am really burned out on these Disney movies. I, I feel like the second they ruined Mulan was the second I was like, all right, the majority of these are going to be shit. I'm done following mm. them. And since then, I really haven't. I liked the Aladdin one all right. Like, I thought Aladdin was fine. But, like, it, it's not better than the original, like, at all. No. So, I don't know. The, the way I feel about them right now is... They're there, and I'm glad that, like, some people like them. But for me personally, uh, it, unless the trailer interests me, I'm not seeing any of these anymore. Because there's just so many, and Jesus fucking Christ, we're getting so many more. Like, you have... <laughs> Chat, you might have no idea of some of the things on this list. I know I didn't. <laughs> like, uh, there's particularly one thing where I was like, Really? And we'll talk about that one potentially first. Um, but Cher, what are your thoughts? As a Disney fan, a huge Disney fan, mm -hmm. like practically half of my room is Disney related. I have all my dolls you set up. You may or may not be dressed as Corella Deville right now. <laughs> yes. But um, I I love Disney. I talk about Disney twenty four seven. Like I said, I have I have like all these dolls here. So um, very similar with Neil's take. Um, most of these, I try not to judge them so quickly, cause I don't want to have a. I, but I want to have low expectations, cause um, I kind of had high expectations for. Let's see. Beating the Beast, Aladdin, Mulan, Lion King, Pinocchio, which, oh god, what did they do to Pinocchio? <laughs> what did they do to Pinocchio, man? Oh man, I'm so, I'm so glad the other Pinocchio won an Oscar, but you know. <laughs> but, oh man, I just, I don't know, you, you guys are kind of crushing me, y'all, and I love Disney. You're, don't crush me right now. Let me, let me be clear, if someone out there likes them, that's fine. Like... <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I was about to say I don't hate them, but I am starting to hate them. <laughs> I, here's the thing, I don't hate anybody who loves them, is kind of what I'm getting at. Like, I understand why one would like them. It's really cool to see some of the things, like, even in Beauty and the Beast, which I think is bad, I still think there's some cool stuff in it. Like, I love Josh Gad as LeFou, I thought the Gaston song was good. Disney. Hmm. You didn't cut a villain song. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, unlike that other one, which made a lot of money, which mm -hmm. claims to be live action, but it really isn't. Didn't they a do CGI. the mob song too? Like, didn't they do the mob song and the Gaston song? I, I don't remember honestly. I haven't watched but, it in a while. Um, I think. How do I want to put this? I'm not going to say that all the Disney animated movies are perfect because there are some flaws, mm -hmm. but I think sometimes 
they like to mask the flaws and completely ignore them instead of like saying yeah we made a mistake in the past we understand that this wasn't how it was supposed to be but it was like back then but mm. we're gonna change for the future and i think sometimes people think that the changes that they do is considered pandering like you know like gaston lefou trying to go towards like the lgbtq plus community i mean hey i'm all for representation but there's a certain way that should be done without forcing it to make it happen mm -hmm. and then as far as casting choices like so probably some of my favorite people glenn close corella i like emma stone corella um, Maleficent, Angelina Jolie. I thought she was good. I haven't mm -hmm. seen the second one, but I like the first one. Even though it reminds me too much of Wicked, which I'm excited for that one to come out. <laughs> um, Will Smith wasn't that bad as the genie. Is he ever going to be Robin Williams? No. There's only one Robin Williams. I didn't mind Will Smith as the genie. He became a huge meme, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, maybe the animation kind of looked weird, but what I like mainly about Disney are the Disney princesses, so whenever they do, like, the movies that are, like, with the Disney princesses, like, with Halle Bailey as mm. Ariel, I want to be optimistic. I know there's been some controversy with her casting, and people are not going to give her a chance because of her role. Mm. Like I said, I want to be cautiously optimistic. I don't want to say, yeah, she's going to do great, or no, she's going to suck. I want to be cautious. I want to be cautious. I learned my lesson from past Disney movies to not get too overly excited because I don't want them to break my heart because I'm a huge Disney fan. Mm. And, yeah, so, like, like I said, I have a soft spot. I, I think probably out of all the live-action ones so far, I like the first Alice in Wonderland. I like the first Maleficent movie. You can probably see there's a pattern here. Um, I thought Aladdin was fine because I love... I love speechless i think naomi scott as jasmine was beautiful mm -hmm. uh and corella and then possibly jungle book and cinderella but that's pretty much it so what we're all saying is fundamentally the new lion king sucks we're all there right we all hate it we all hate the new lion king yep all right good despise yep. loathe I what really sucks is, and this is my biggest problem with the movie, so it is what I'm going to harp on. Uh, the guy who, like, when they do that talk singing thing, and they sing just a mm. little of Be Prepared, it sounds good. So you know if that actor would have sang actual Be Prepared, it probably would have been sick. Which is why it yeah. sucks that villain is so uh, villain songs are, are a dying art now. We need more, damn it. Mm. We we need more villains in general. That's a, my that's my other problem with Disney is I miss the classic villains. Mm -hmm. I know they're trying to be like they don't want to be just like one dimensional and but I don't really like the twist villains. Um, the ones where there's not really necessarily a villain, they're just misunderstood and it's like generation versus generation. Mm -hmm. Like, I think the last quote unquote good Disney villain we had. I don't know. It's, it's got to be Ernesto, right? It's got to be Ernesto de Probably la Cruz. Ernesto yeah. I think, and he was just okay. Worked. Like, he was just And okay. that's also Pixar as well. That's... Yeah, that that one worked out. When it comes to twist villains, I think he's the one of the few ones that worked out. Hans, Bellwether, whatever. I, I No, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, and like I said, anything, like, like even like King Candy. King Candy from Record Ralph, we were just talking, just talking about Disney. Honestly, King Candy was, like, the last good Disney villain. And then they just went... I, I think I'd agree with that, probably. <laughs> Fro F Frozen's villain kind of sucked, too, if you ask me. And I, I honestly think the reason why they did that at the last minute, because originally Elsa was supposed to be the villain. Because mm. they were going to follow the Snow Queen story, based off loose, loosely based off of Hans Christian Andersen. Originally, Elsa was going to be the villain. She 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 had her army. She had a different design, but because of Let It Go, they had to completely change the story. 
and it didn't really necessarily had a villain, so they just slap pawns. Because, you know, you always gotta watch out for the good ones, because, you know, the cute ones are evil. God forbid they just don't have a villain like Moana. <laughs> Disney, yeah. I'm throwing shade. <laughs> I'm looking back, Encanto didn't really, well, Encanto didn't really have a villain villain. Yeah. The, vi the villain was expectations, villain. Jack. The villain yeah. was expectations. <laughs> and then, like, R Ryan the Last Dragon, I know some people have problems with the message of that movie. Mm. I like the designs, but I think the message as a whole was kind of... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, have, I have a lot of problems with that film. <laughs> I haven't even seen it. It, it went I, right I, over my radar. I think, I think the last good Disney villain... I forget his name, unfortunately, because it, it was a some, it, and it's Pixar again. It was Luca? Mm -hmm. Oh, Which, yeah. It, simple, simple, like plot. He was just a jerk. He was just a bully, and that's all he needed to be. He didn't need to be dun 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 big reveal. No, he's just an asshole. <laughs> that's fine. Some people are just assholes. That's very accurate. I would say the last iconic Disney villain, like the, the most recent one that everyone universally is like, damn, that's a good villain. It's probably Gothel. Like, I can't think of another one after her. Yeah, I'm looking back. Yeah, even even like Incredibles Pink Panther, 2, I think no. Pink was pretty funny, but I want to say Mother Gothel really made an impact. And and not only, she doesn't, she doesn't have magical powers. I mean, yeah, she uses Rapunzel to She's stay young, but... I think why people like Gothel is her relatability, because there are people like Gothel in real life who like to gaslight victims, mm -hmm. and that's scary. That's even scarier than like Maleficent, the Horn King, Frollo. Well, Frollo does kind of the same thing with Quasimodo, but uh, Hades mm -hmm. and Jafar. I think some of the more realistic villains are the scarier villains. I, I the agree. Ones that are my mythical. Yeah. And I think, again, if we, if we discount Pixar so you don't have De La Cruz, then yeah, looking back, no, Mother Gothel, I agree. Mm -hmm. The most recent, and that's 2010. <laughs> wow. Well, well, with that, let's go into some of the new stuff coming out. Now, we're going to start with things that got announced and were never followed up on, because these are the things that could happen, but... It seems like they're in the void, and the main reason I want to talk about them is because Jack already referenced one. Apparently, Disney is reportedly in talks to remake James and the Giant Peach. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard about that one. I like how that. <laughs> the main reason I wanted yes. to bring it up is because Jack was literally like, <laughs> "You see, you face. can't do this." And <laughs> Jack's face just says it all. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, the film. The majority of the film is set on a giant peach floating in the ocean. Mm -hmm. Unless you're going to make a giant prop peach and float it in the ocean, the majority of the environment's not going to be real. And also... <laughs> it'll be one human actor being James. It'll be the Jungle Book again. To be fair, I do think the Jungle Book worked. So there is precedent for this. But I was just... That's what I was saying... I just wonder what... Here's the thing. The, the thing that's really cool about James and the Giant Beach is when James runs away, when he leaves, everything goes animated. So do you just skip that part? Do you just skip one of the best parts of the movie and just have it all be live action? I, I, I don't understand how you do that. Because it feels like you're sacrificing such a big part of the mo movie. But luckily, Jack... There is a solid chance that this isn't actually happening now because it was announced in 2016 and we have heard okay. nothing since. So there's a good chance it's not happening. A live action Tinkerbell movie was also announced and it's kind of in the same boat. I do want to add an addendum to that and um, my thoughts on doing James and Giant Peach. And it is a thought I have on, say, the Jungle Book remake. Uh, the Jungle Book remake is a direct bench, what I just said. Um, you can do, you can make a live action James and Giant Peach film. Mm. You can do that. You can't do a live action James and Giant Peach remake of the original. You can take this is the source material and make a new film. Yes, do that. You you can't say hi, this is the original and we've redone it like this. No. No. I, I'm kind of in the same boat there. I. 
I haven't seen James and the Giant Peach in a very long time now. Like, it's been mm. a while. But the one thing I really remember about that was, oh, wow, all these characters are really goofy looking. Like, there's a centipede guy. There's, like, uh, these weird insects that look just so strange. The yeah, it looks like a grasshopper. I forgot. Yeah. The, the and there was like a of the spider uh, in live action is terrible. Yeah, a French spider. She, I know she was French because she had a little beret. <laughs> beret. And a striped shirt. All she was yeah. missing was a baguette and a bicycle. I'm was she saying, goth? That, I don't know why. I, don't, I just got goth vibes from her. Well, th that movie is like, <laughs> if I had to describe it in one word, I would say it's very charming. But the idea of trying to make all of those like quirky stop motion characters or or claymation it might have been stop motion might have been claymation i don't know memory basically the same thing <laughs> but uh the idea of making them into realistic live bugs is terrifying and i think disney if they do make this are gonna have to realize the solid fact that a bunch of realistic looking bugs on a giant fruit is gross you're gonna make James and the James and the Giant Peach gross if you do this. Which you know what? I'd be on board for it if they go that direction and just have it, like they're not stylized at all. It is just a, an accurate giant CGI spider, an accurate grasshopper, and they're just like talking, and it's gross. The peach is slowly rotting as they go. Do that. Do something really different. Don't just try and do the same thing again, but in live action, because. The direction, thinking about it, the direction they would go, most likely, mm. is the cat's route. Oh, oh, no. oh no. no. And oh, no. we don't no. Don't invoke cats. We don't. No. Alright, I, I want that memory out of my mind. Actually, now that I think about it, the, the morbid side of my brain is coming out, and I'm like, now I want to see that. <laughs> it... it I've said this before, there was a morbid side of my brain that wanted to see what M. Night Shyamalan was going to do with the other Avatar stories. Oh, God. That side is coming out now, because I'm like, how bad could they make James and the Giant Peach? How ugly can that peach be? Uh, but uh, with the Tinkerbell one, I know Tinkerbell had a lot of success in solo films, so if that yes. happens... I don't know. I watched, well, I watched a lot. I, 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 okay, sorry. I love those movies as a kid. Oh my gosh. They were like my everything. And then like when like like former Disney Channel stars would would do a song for the movie. Like Selena Gomez did a song for the, for the first one. Demi Lovato did the second one. Bridget Mendler from Good Luck Charlie did the third one. China Ann McLean and her sisters did the fourth one. And then Zendaya did the short, like, Oh my god, it's just it's just so nostalgic. Uh, and that that was probably my favorite thing about Peter Pan were the fairies because I am I am pretty girly, but I have an edge at the same time. But I I love pixies and fairies and cute little woodland creatures. <laughs> Maybe I should be a Disney princess. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I think I start... Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, but I remember hearing. Reese Witherspoon was in talks of being Tinkerbell, but I forgot why they canceled it. And then they had Peter Pan and Wendy, and I was like, oh, maybe that was the reason why. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe if Peter Pan and Wendy do, does well, it'll be a spinoff of that if they do make it. Who's to say? Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of that, though, let's go straight into the ones that are about to come out, uh, which <laughs> are Peter um... Pan and Wen Wendy and Little Mermaid. Uh... Did we all watch the Peter Pan and Wendy trailer? Because that's coming out next week. That's the next I, fucking week. I, yeah. I, I rewatched it just in case so I can kind of get a refresher. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the way I feel about Peter Pan, here's the thing. I love Peter Pan a lot. Like, when I was a kid, that was my Disney movie, and Peter Pan was the Disney character I fell in love with. But there have been so many adaptions of Peter Pan like he's just one of those characters that always gets adapted this is probably the live action remake I'm the least worried about just because we now know Peter Pan is a character where it's like oh yeah well it's fine he'll get another one in like 20 years he'll, he'll get another movie later so I, I don't really 
I'm excited yeah, to see yeah. it, I guess, but like, want, I'm not worried yeah. about it. Yeah, I want to say, out of all the Peter Pan stuff that I've watched, I want to say, like, Hook is probably my favorite one. Mm -hmm. And then the one from, like, the early 2000s, I forgot what that one was called, but that, one's that was really probably cool. my favorite. I think it's just called Peter Pan. I don't know if it was called Peter Pan or Neverland. And then I know they did, like, a Broadway musical fi called Finding Neverland. I love that but musical. I like that one, too. Uh, there was Pan in the 2010s, Oh, I think. no. Hugh Jackman not... as Hook. Oh, no. That's the oh, only no. thing I remember was Hugh Jackman and Hook with, like, two swords and the big Russian hat. The, the, only, <laughs> thing I re the only thing I remember is them all doing, singing, uh, fucking... It's not Smells, smells like, like Team, Team Spirit. Spirit, yeah. Yeah, Nirvana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it reminded me of the movie A Knight's Tale, because in that, just, just randomly, everybody's doing We Will Rock You. But that's so much better. Like, Knight's Tale is a pretty good movie. Uh, Knight's Tale is a very meh movie, but I love it. I like Knight's Tale. Tale. <laughs> I love A Knight's Tale. I haven't watched that movie. Oh, it's great fun. Like, it's a medieval fantasy type thing. It's good. Oh, I like medieval stuff. I'm supposed to be going yeah. to the Tournament of Kings for my birthday. Uh, Cher, the one you were thinking of is Peter Pan 2003. And yep. that one is probably my favorite. That, that one does a lot of loyal stuff. However, if you want to have a good laugh chat, uh, I don't know if anybody has heard of The Goes Wrong Show. But on YouTube yes. right now for free is something called Peter Pan Goes Wrong. Yeah. It, oh. Jack has seen the, it. There's so a British excited. theater production company just called the, the Play That Goes Wrong. And they just do various shows and musicals every year of, here's the story of Peter Pan. But the production goes wrong. It's like a very famous clip from Peter Pan Goes Wrong. It's all the, the, the darling siblings in a three-tiered bunk bed saying goodnight to mother. And she's like, ah, oh, Wendy! And Wendy sits up and her bunk falls. <laughs> right and on, then they John! Fall onto the bottom one and the actor is just shouting. <laughs> it's, I... it's deliberately made to, like, go wrong. We might oh, do... it's, it's so funny. We might do like, a watch party of this one. changes don't work, <laughs> props fall apart. It's brilliant. Cher, you'd, you'd oh, wait, probably then... like it. It's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I'll, I'll send you the link to them. They're phenomenal. I don't know if I should laugh or cry. <laughs> I mean, if you, it's it's great slapstick, and all the actors are in on it, so no one actually got hurt. <laughs> Despite everything you see, no one actually got hurt. Okay. Oh, I've, I've, I've just been, remembered the no, he's behind you scene. Because I, I do, I have a sense Where of... Where is Peter Pan? I'm going to poison Jen. his medicine. And oh, the wait. Goes, he's oh, wait. behind you. I now he's behind me! I directed the show! What is wrong with you? This is a serious you play! You have to find him! Oh, there and, is. Then, and then we hold on two more things. Mm -hmm. I remember one of the episodes of Wizards of Waverly Place. They did the production of yes. Peter Pan, and it had uh, Selena Gomez as Tinkerbell, and she's slapping Tinkerbell, or the fairy. <laughs> Everyone's like, boo! And then, um, I don't know if you guys remember, I, I forgot which I forgot which television. I don't know if it was ABC or NBC or CBS. They did like those like musicals live, like like no, Peter Pan no, live. No, that doesn't exist. That doesn't <laughs> exist. I'm British. I've never seen this. It doesn't exist. It doesn't it exist. Was kind of, it was kind of funny though. No. CGI <laughs> no, like, crocodile Christopher Walken Hook. No. Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken Hook sounds pretty. No, good. no, no. It's no, not good. No, he forgets no, his no, lines I'm halfway just... through. <laughs> No, yeah, he forgets his lines. That's the only thing why I remember that is he forgets his lines on live television, and everyone just looks at him like. <laughs> it's bad. Not even kidding. When I first thought about doing reviews, that is like that was one of the reasons I was like, I really hate this. I like aggressively hate this. One day I will bitch about it when I have the editing skills to do so. I assure you, but. It was kind of funny. That part was kind of funny. Everything else was boring, but that part was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, no. yeah, so Peter Pan and Wendy, I think, and it's the problem I have with all these live-action remakes, the CGI in some shots looks great, and then there's needless, really shit-looking CGI in others. Having only seen the trailer, the shot of, like, Wendy drifting out the bed and, like, 
duvet and stuff coming off, just pull the duvet off. Just have it on strings. It's not difficult. That'd be so much easier than paying an artist to sit at their computer for hours to animate that. Yeah. I would just say... Put a, I get, would... get a fishing hook, hook it, and pull it off. It is I, so yeah. simple to I, do. I, I don't know if it's that simple. <laughs> it is. It genuinely is. You have someone else... Know. Have someone sat beside the bed, on the other side of the bed, and have them pull it off. It's... I don't think you should actually use a fishing rod, is what I'm giving it. Uh, I mean, if I were to watch this movie, I don't know if I should. I'll watch it for Jude Law, because I love mm. Jude Law. I saw yep. one clip of him as Captain Hook, and it looked pretty good. Yep, I was watching the trailer, and I'm like, I'm not going to watch this. And then he, he popped up as Captain Hook, and I'm like, okay, I might watch this. You'll watch it if you hear it's good. How do you guys yeah. feel about Tinkerbell? Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. Fine. You guys okay? Okay, I'm making sure. I mean, the actor who's playing Peter Pan looks good. Performance, again, just from the trailer. Good. Solid. I'm, I'm on board. I know there's... Tinkerbell, the... I don't have anything to say, because there's nothing to say. She's a character who doesn't talk and didn't do much in the trailer. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I just... Like, cause I just feel... I feel so bad that... I don't want to say people are... What's the word I'm looking for? That's not offensive. Dicks? Judging on appearances, let's say. Yeah. I... Dicks? <laughs> I just I just feel bad. I don't know why I feel like I want to mm. cry, because there's just not so many opportunities for mm. certain people, and we're already judging them because of a role that's been for what many generations and that's how I also feel about Little Mermaid it's just we're just so quick to judge without watching it yeah and I I don't know how I don't know how to say it I don't I don't want to cry I just I just feel I, so I'm, bad I'm in the same boat I I think if the movie sucks say it sucks it, don't get it, mad at the actors <laughs> I mean unless they did a bad job yeah, oh, yeah in I mean, that case yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. I just, I know there's, there's some. I, it's, I know it's, it's, it's basically nostalgia. That's, that's the main reason. It's like, everyone's familiar with all these characters. We all want them to look a certain way, but mm -hmm. not everyone looks the same. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to cry. I feel like I'm about to cry, and I don't want to cry. It's okay. It's okay. Um, on the Tinkerbell thing. And again, this point's been brought up by hundreds of people before. The book doesn't specify an, ethnic an ethnicity to the fairies or anything like that. Mm. Um, just this past winter, I went and saw a pantomime, which I say as a word, knowing that that is a very British thing that I will need to explain at some point to you guys. I've heard um, pantomime. I know what a pantomime oh, okay. is. <laughs> um, and in this version of Future Panda they were doing on the stage, for one, there's a change that I think they did in that, that I think they're doing for this film as well, where Tiger Lily and her group are more like a rebellion against the pirates, as opposed to a native tribe, which I think is a good change for many reasons as to how that was depicted before. Mm -hmm. The other one was Tinkerbell in this production was a redhead, um, rounder woman. And she was just going ham. She was like, it's completely different to the film. She's incredibly like aggressive to all the characters. And I can see it. She's she's being a bitch. She's... Well, that's Tinkerbell. Oh, Tinkerbell's a bitch. It's... Yeah, yeah. Tinkerbell doesn't need to look like she does in that one film you saw years ago. And all the sequels and spinoffs. This is just another version of the story. Mm -hmm. You still have that original. They're not getting rid of the original. Ideally, they're not saying if they took the original off Disney Plus, if they stopped releasing the original, then we'd have a problem. Oh yeah, but they're not doing that. This is just another film made by another group of people. Yeah, I fundamentally, whenever there is like uh, a character that changes race uh, in different adaptations, it, it's something I have no problem with at all. I, I do somewhat understand the criticism of I want them to look how they did in the original. That I understand. But here's the thing. This isn't the original. It's a new one. It's a change. And things change with time. So, like, I'm completely fine with 
Ariel. I'm completely fine with Tinkerbell. I'm fine with all of it. And, you know, I'm just excited to see the movie and how badly that sucks and how awful that is. We can yell at that. We don't need to obsess over skin color. There's so much more to get mad at. Let's get mad at that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Again, with that, the CGI. <laughs> with that, let's go straight into Little Mermaid. Sebastian looks awful. Flounder looks awful. Again, the CGI. <laughs> but it's kind of... the CGI. Here's... I think I think this is the same. Pe- I think this is the same person that did Mary Poppins Returns. Mm. I'm gonna say it. Directing, do you mean? I'm gonna say it, and I know this is gonna get me in trouble. I think so. This is gonna get me in trouble, but I'm gonna say it. I think. The live-action Little Mermaid movie, based on the trailers, kind of looks good. And I kind of want to see it. (laughs) Yeah, Jack, I I know. (laughs) I really like how they did the kiss the girl scene. I think that looks really good. I love how the fire lines look. Did you hear they're they're changing the lyrics to uh, Under the Sea and I... No, not Under the Sea. Poor Unfortunate Souls and Kiss the Girl. They're going to change some of the lyrics. Why are they... Okay, they're including Poor Unfortunate Souls, so I guess I can't bitch. But I think it kind of looks good. I like how dramatic it looks like Eric's ship is going to sink. I like how the visuals look. I think the underwater looks good. I, I think their hair looks okay. I don't think it looks bad yet. That being said, I still think it's going to be awful. But I'm... I'm kind of hoping that maybe the story can pull it out because Melissa McCarthy looks pretty damn good as Ursula to me. So if she can nail the song, if she can sing Poor Unfortunate Souls and it be really good, she might be able to like really elevate that performance a little. Obviously, it's not going to like touch what happened with Carol Spiney at all. It's not going to touch it. But Pat Carroll, she she recently passed away last year. I'm, I'm just saying, she looks the part, she sounds the part, Melissa McCarthy's a good actress, maybe we can have our first really good live-action Disney remake villain with Ursula. Yeah, yeah like, I don't remember, I, don't I mean, I want to say, well, was there any other villains that were decent? <laughs> no. Gaston. And yeah, Gaston. Uh, and Gaston had a song as well. Gaston was okay. Okay, he was I didn't fine. like the person that played Jafar. I did not like Jafar. Nah, he wasn't intimidating in the slightest. Gaston felt very one note to me in that movie. Like, I know that in the original, it's like, he's the big beef head. But they really play into how, like, like, how much joy he takes when he's trying to kill the beast. To the point where you really start to hate Gaston at the end. Whereas, with the remake... He Luke just kind of seemed whiny. <laughs> I'll be real. Yeah. 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 I'm right, yeah wait. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Oh, what's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Hella. 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 Oh, oh uh, sh- hey, yeah, yeah. There you go. I actually like her as the evil stepmother. I thought she was decent in that. I actually oh, I heard didn't even know she I've never seen the Cinderella live action remake. I've heard it's good. Ironically, I, I've heard it. I've heard a lot of people say it's the best one. So, yeah. yeah. And then, and then, of course, uh, Helena Bonham Carter, Queen of Hearts. I mean, <laughs> Helena Bonham Carter. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just fun. Um, my reaction to your thoughts on the trailer was, I disagree. I do not think it looks good. I think it looks very okay. Melissa McCarthy asks Ursula on that point. I like her design. If, 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 I, if I was given, like, a lineup of, like, actresses, yeah, yeah, I'd I, I, I pick her. My only other exposure to her has been the Ghostbusters film, so... Oh. Yeah, you... I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this turns my thoughts on her as an actress around. I, I, actually, I mean, I a actually, lot of that film isn't the actress's yeah. fault. Oh, I, remember, I remember seeing a commercial of her where she was singing, mm. and she sounded pretty decent. I okay. forgot what commercial Good. it was. It was some type of like vacation commercial, but she was actually pretty decent in that. I I can't. I think... Go ahead. Oh, you first. Well, I, I can't remember what it's called, but 
she's in like a meta drama movie with Ryan Reynolds that is really good. She really shows that she has some great acting chops in that one. Cool. Yeah, but I, I agree, you know, like Sebastian looks weird. Flounder looks weird. I I know I I think I think they're scared that if they look resemblance of the animated characters that people are not gonna take it seriously because it's fake. But when they look too realistic they're like almost unrecognizable and kind of mm -hmm. scary. Look, and yeah. There there are two ways they're going to do Stitch. Either <laughs> Stitch is going to look absolutely wonderful and we're all going to be impressed or ugly Sonic all over again. We're going to oh, be doing God. a whole nother ugly Sonic. Well, mm -hmm. look at like look at Stitch. He's such a cute and cartoony character. Like fundamentally, he's one of the most cartoony cartoon characters I've ever seen. How do you make that real and still look good? How do you make Stitch's giant mouth look good? I have an answer for that, and we'll get to that when we discuss this film. Is it is it true that they did a Lilo and Stitch anime? Yes. I've not seen any of it. It's like a sequel to the show. I like at the end, it's a sequel to the Lilo and Stitch like series. Mm -hmm. Like towards the end of it, Lilo shows up and she's older and she has a kid. I think and it's like, oh, that's cute. Oh, okay. That's, that's kind of cool. Um, you <laughs> yeah. know. Uh, I've never seen it. This is just yeah. what I prefer. Halle Bailey. I know. I, I, I keep wanting to call her Halle Berry, but it's not Halle Berry. Halle Bailey. Mm -hmm. I think she looks fine as Ariel. Like, like like what we talked about earlier, you know. like I like her hair. Yeah. I mean, I kind of wish it was a little bit more red, but, you know, it's, you know, it, she has a different design. I know they were probably, con I know some people were concerned that Ariel's going to have, like, a she sell she seashell bikini but it's more like a bra type wrap i always wondered what the fuck that material was in the trailer like what is that <laughs> i like her tail and her singing is actually pretty good i mean that's what ariel's known for ariel arguably is considered the best disney like princess singer arguably i i say mulan. i say i say mulan or you know someone else but Ariel is known for her voice, and then if she's able to act voiceless, because I think, what, two-thirds of the movie, of the original, she, she had no voice, but yeah. she was animated to have so much expression mm -hmm. without saying a single word, and you could tell how she was feeling. You know, she was happy to see Eric. She was crying that Vanessa was going to marry Eric. Uh... She was very curious of the human things on, on, on land. Like, if they're able to do that in a live-action movie, I'm actually fine with it. I'm yeah. cool. That's you what know, my I, hope is. Yeah. The, the reason for casting this actress is because she can pull that off. Mm -hmm. You need someone who can act just physically, just with the face. And not vocally. So that is my hope. But brilliant. We found this actress who's the best one for this job. Here we go. I versus see. her yeah, singing's we, really yeah. good. I've yeah, seen singing's yeah. good. My, my, I love, my, yeah, I love, yeah, I love dolls. So I've seen what the, the her sisters look like as dolls, and it's it's okay. Yeah. I I kind of miss the original one where they had distinct colors, because from what I've been told, the sisters are based off of the seven seas, mm -hmm. and yeah. um. Each of them has a color specific to them. Like Arista's red, Atina's orange, I think Adele is Adela is yellow, Ariel has green, uh Alana's blue, and so on and so forth. I loved A names. Yeah. yeah, it's all all of them are A. Aquada, Andrina, Arissa, Atina, Adela, Alana, Ariel. So <laughs> Sorry. And Ariana Grande. <laughs> All right, yeah. There was actually rumors that people thought that Ariana Grande was going to be Ariel. <laughs> Again, yeah, casting well, someone who can sing. She's Glenda. No, but, yeah, my, but my. the series in the live action one, I kind of, I just wish they had this, a, a distinct color because they have too many multiple color palettes. So it's going to be kind of hard to distinguish who's who. Because, like I said, in the animated version, one was red, orange, yellow. So it was easier. You may not remember all their names, but you're like, oh, it's the red one. 
and there's the purple one, and there's the yellow one, and there's the blue one. Like, I remember watching Little Mermaid 3, Ariel's Beginning. I know Disney directed DVD sequels aren't their best, but... There were three? Well, it's technically a prequel. It's not, a, it's not really... It's a prequel. It's before the events of the first movie. I didn't know there was a third one. I knew there were two. <laughs> yeah, there's a third one. Yeah, there was a third one, but it's just basically... It's, it's Footloose. It's pretty much Footloose. <laughs> and none of them have feet. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty much Footloose. No music, no singing, no dancing, blah blah blah. Footloose. You know, loose. It, it does amuse me that this 100% these live action remakes are the new direct to Disney DVD sequels I think that's yeah. how people describe them as and uh, then Jack and then were, the, were you saying something before though? oh sorry uh, no well uh, to build on Cher's point and it'll tie into Flounder and Sebastian mm. it, it, it's again it's just a thing of oh we, we don't want the, all the sisters in bright the same colors. Ah, oh, no, at least this is the more realistic version. So, smaller color palette for the characters. Yeah, yeah. I hate that mindset. I'd be curious if, and we'll need to see with the film, if we, when we see more of Ariel on land, maybe that's a choice. That it's, oh, the characters in the water stick to these colors, and the characters on land will be wearing these colors just sort of visually. There may be a reason for that. But I think it is just, ah, more realistic. We can't be cartoony with this. Now show me the talking crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be interesting for Renu to see. And I think they said that this version, or this remake, is going to be the longest one. It's going to have a long, the longest running time out of any Disney live-action remake. I think that's what I read. I could be wrong. Why? What, was Little Mermaid that long? I don't think so. No, it was like only like an hour and like... Hour 23? Yeah. I wonder I what this, they've I think added. This one is this supposed to be like almost two hours. Yes, they've added. They've added forty minutes. Ursula origin story, maybe. <laughs> maybe or more land experiences. I know they said they wanted There'll to. There'll be new songs. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Lin Manuel Miranda is supposed to be doing the stuff. So, I mean, yeah. And then I remember. I think ABC did like the live action. Well, like Little Mermaid live. Because the girl that played Moana was was Ariel, and then Queen mm -hmm. Latifah was Ursula, and John Stamos was the French chef. <laughs> Shaggy was Sebastian the Crab. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. That's fun. Okay, on actors, on casting, um, I have to double check his name. Javier Bardem mm -hmm. as Triton. Looks great. The actual, like, actors for these roles, I have no issue with. They all look great in the trailer. The actual underwater sequences, I think the lighting's off, I think the motion's off. I have a lot of issues. I'll need to see it. I'll need to see the film to have an actual opinion on it. But I kind of don't care about this film enough to go see it. That is I'll watch it when it comes to Disney Plus. I'm I'm not paying to go watch this film. Is it is where I'm at. If people are worshipping it, if it turns out it's brilliant. If it's the next puss in sure, boots. I'll go see it. Yeah. But at the moment I have I have no intention of watching this film. I, I, I mean, innocent. yeah. I mean, it's understandable. I mean, I'm not. I'm not expecting everyone to love it right away. That's <laughs> not what I'm. I mean, like I said, I, I, I'm a big softy when it comes to these things, so I don't want to judge it too quickly. But if I you would, don't like, I'll it, judge it for you. <laughs> if you don't like the movie, I'm okay as long as you don't like the. As long as if you don't say you don't like the movie because of ethnicity roles, yeah. like that's stupid. Like, come no, on. No, the moment you say that, your opinion no longer matters. Like okay, like yeah, like for real. I'm like seriously. I'm I'm like I said. I I'll see. I'm, I'll kind of convince my parents that I want to see it, just to see what it looks like. I don't want to put my like I said. I don't want to get my hopes up too high, but I think it'll be fine. Not great, mm -hmm. but fine. Finn, <laughs> it'll be Finn. <laughs> you see, for me, the trailer looks okay, and I think that's why I'm like praising it so much. Just. I, I, I do want to say, I think if Ursula didn't look as good as she's starting to look, I'd probably hate this trailer more. But the idea of, like, they're doing the villain song. They're, they've they got an actor that looks like Ursula. I, I think that's what's giving me a lot of hope for this movie. The fact that they could get that part right that they've gotten so wrong before. 
Yeah, yeah fingers I actually, crossed like, they've yeah. learned from Scar. Yeah, and Jafar. Like, yeah. yeah. I actually like her, her tentacles. They like are like luminescent, like glow oh, yeah. in the dark. I, like I thought that was a pretty cool design. Yeah, no, that's fun. Okay, that, doing something different. Yeah. But fuck the present I, I'm and the past. We're going to gonna what talk about Flotsam the future. and Jetsam are going to look like. Uh, what are Flotsam and Jetsam going to look like? Is I wouldn't be like... surprised if they're not in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she might have two eels that swim by in the cave or something. Actually, no, no. They've added 40 minutes. Flotsam <laughs> and Jetsam backstory. <laughs> Well, Once I guess we Ursula into... met these baby eels, <laughs> and we're gonna devote forty minutes of the film to it. So now that we dived into Little Mermaid, what's our next topic? Uh -huh. Well, Water we're pumps. gonna go into the future. So these are the remakes that are coming, ladies and gents. These are coming. They have casting. They have some details about them. These are going to happen, whether we want it or not. So we're going to be don't, don't just rattle them off. Give, mm -hmm. Say it and then give us a moment to drink it I in and then process. we're we're going to go one by one. We're going to we're going to talk about <laughs> in order. We're going to feel them all. We're going to talk about how we feel. We're going to shotgun it a little. We won't spend like, you know, it took us an hour to talk about everything we have so far. We probably won't do that with all of these because literally it's just this exists. How do you feel? Uh <laughs> But we're going through all of them, chat. All the live-action upcoming Disney remakes. We're, I'm going to start oh. us off easy. Going to start us off with one that could work. And then we're going to build up to the why the fuck are you doing this is. So, first of all, we're going to start with Hercules. Hercules <gasps> is getting a live-action remake. It's happening. <gasps> there is... <laughs> Cher's already reacting. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> there are actors casted in this movie. Let me where see. Where's James I can find Woods? Him. Where where is James Woods? <laughs> I think confirmed James Woods is not in it, which is unfortunate to say the least. He said he'll do he'll come back as her us Hades. Anything. <laughs> yeah, he, he literally said he would be in Hades for pretty much anything. And he takes love Except hey. He's he's him in Kingdom Hearts just because he loves him so much. Yeah. I hope the that's a shame to hear but my hope for that is that it means that they're gonna again do something different because mm -hmm. i feel like if you have james woods play hercules in this or hades sorry H yes play hades. Oh, it'd be interesting <laughs> if, play hercules. I'd watch if you it. have to play hades in this live action film unless the whole film is good the response is going to be that's a shame for James Woods' Hercules. <laughs> Hercules, Hades. <laughs> oh, he'll, he'll have been good in it. And the rest of it might drag down his performance quite a bit. Mm. So I, I, I'm on board for someone else playing a new version of Hades. Fine by me. It, it, it's, it's almost like, okay, given... Actually, yeah, my thought on this is given the current track record of the live-action remakes... Mm -hmm. Yeah, let, let's not let's not touch the original. Let's 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 not ruin it. G give them a cameo. G bring back a bunch of the, as much of the original cast as you can in small roles. The well, one thing that I like that the Mulan remake did, having not watched it, is that Ming Na Wen got to be in it. Yeah, that's fun. I'll, Good for her. Like would yeah. you like to know who's playing Hades? Sure. Fine. Vigo Mortensen. Who you may it's recognize okay. from Lord okay. of the Rings. Who? Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. Who? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what else is he being in well, this now? What I, what I like about that is, like, you know, he's more of a serious actor. Maybe Hades is going to be, like, super serious this time. Maybe a different play on Hades. Or, potentially, if they are going to keep the same Hades, we could see this actor who doesn't usually do com comedy roles doing a snarky comedy role. That well, could be I kind know, of fun. I know in the, original, in the original animated Hercules, they wanted Hades to be, like, serious and broody, like the previous villains. Mm. But James Woods came into the audition kind of like car salesman. And laughing, you know, giving everyone a laugh, and that's how he got the role mm -hmm. because of his comedic timing. So they kind of 
change Hades to fit more with uh, James Woods' um, com- comedic timing, I guess. Mm. It, it is being directed by the Russo brothers, so by all accounts, we have the potential for this to be good. However, they- I, I, I would say with a lot of the Disney live-action remakes, they had the potential to be good. Did they uh, say who was doing uh, Hercules? I think the Russos are only producing. Oh, are they only producing? Guy Ritchie is listed as director. Oh, he did Aladdin. Yeah, yeah. That, he did that Aladdin. That my hopes. We we do have the name. Aladdin of was the one of the more okay Disney remakes. So uh, yeah, yeah. I I liked Aladdin. I I do think they kind of ruined the uh, the the final act of that movie a little. Like they butchered oh. it. <laughs> Yeah, like how uh, uh, Jasmine was singing "Speechless" and then she's <laughs> literally speechless. she's singing it in her head. She's literally speechless in that scene. None of it's <laughs> happening. She's imagining that sequence. She's like, ah, push these men out of the way. She's just imagining that. She's just not doing any of it. The the actor playing Herc is Brant Dottery or Dottery. I have never heard of this actor, but apparently they were in Fifty Shades Freed. Oh no. Oh, God, no. Oh, hopefully this kicks off their career. <laughs> <laughs> so who's Megara? Or just Meg? Paid in list. Okay, I can see this guy. As, I can see this guy as Hercules. He's, got, he's got, got a good jawline. Paid in list is not a bad actress. So I I could see her being Meg. And she has the look. Oh, 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 Peyton. Oh, wait, Peyton. Oh, from Jesse. Jesse no. and Cobra Kai. I don't think so. Might be a different paid in list. Oh. Yeah, actresses who have different names, the same names, it, it confuses me too. In the UK, that's why we have actors equity to make sure that doesn't happen. Oh, I did not know that. But oh, the actors have to change their name if someone else already has the name. <laughs> David Tennant is not David Tennant's real name. What is David Dennett's real name? I didn't know that. Oh, I, I forget. I forget. Watch it be something like... Something like... Weird. Like... Omar L- 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 Lala. Omar Lala. Oh, it's, it's, no. It's, <laughs> he's Scottish. It's David John MacDonald. Oh. So there was another actor in the UK, a part of Actors' Equity, this like overarching thing that protects actors' rights and pay and everything. Called David John McDonald. So okay, he had to come up with a stage name. Yeah, David Tennant. The the one thing I'm noticing about the casting for um, Hercules before we move on is there are a lot of people playing the different gods. Like Michael Chiklis is in this movie as fucking Hephaestus. So like, I'm wondering if it, Michael Chiklis. Yeah. He he played um he played Thing, right? Yep. He played Thing. Uh he was in Gotham. He mm. he's been in a lot of stuff. I, I wait, I want to know where are my muses? I I don't see the muses casted. I will mention that uh Russell Brand is apparently a god named Narcissus. Oh, cuz he <laughs> uh, cuz he like, himself in the mirror. I don't know the names of the muses so they may have been casted and I just don't recognize I them. I know one of them was Calypso. I think one of them's name is Calypso and I think she's the main one. Uh, there's someone here named Calliope who is played by Vanessa Oh, Williams. Calliope! That's a, I think that's, that's another... not Calypso, Calliope. Rosario yeah, Dawson's she's... in the movie. Oh. Yeah, so okay. So yeah, with... I know, I know Yvette there's Nicole Brown, Calypso. damn. I know there's been a, like, sorry... I know there's been like, like fan casting or whatever, for for these like live action Disney movies. I think for the muses, a lot of people wanted like some of the more like singers. Like I think some people want like Beyonce and Lizzo and Rihanna. And... I would say cast unknowns that are really good at singing. Ca- cast yeah, I, th- I think actual like gospel singers yeah, that would be really fun. As long as they nail songs like Zero to Hero and Go the Distance, I, I'm chill with this movie. Yeah. I mean, we are also assuming that it's going to be a musical. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, better right. be, God, I hate that be about visible. Mulan. I, I've always hated that. Because, you know, when we get these live-action Disney remakes, yeah, they suck. But at least we get to hear the songs sang with, like, new covers and new music, and it sounds nice at the very least, usually. Mulan mm. didn't even get that. <laughs> No, because it was a it was gonna be a serious war movie. Yeah, serious, serious. Again, haven't seen it. Don't care. Yeah, I'm sorry. Do not intend to. I, I intend to close my grave having not seen that film. Why did you trade Mushu the dragon for a phoenix? Jack, I was at Disney World when I saw the movie. They were doing like a screening thing at Disney World. I walked in, watched. I want to say the first hour went. I'm not wasting my trip at Disney World on this, and I left. That yep. is how much of Mulan I have seen. <laughs> and it was free. Yep. That's the only reason I went to see it. I was like, oh, it's free. I might as well. We might review this on Plus Pals. And I was like, no, I'm not touching this. <laughs> Again, I've said this before. The day that it came out and it premiered on Disney Plus, I and a bunch of friends went over to other... We, we had a house party. We went, went all sat down and we watched the original instead. Yep. <laughs> I like that. It's definitely not a girl worth fighting for. So, Which I hope that actress has been in other things. I hope I hope she's still doing good. To to continue, mm. uh, Atlantis: The Lost Empire. I knew it. We started I with the okay. crazy one. Now I here's the thing. Here's the thing. We do have one casting on this, and it's good. Milo will be played by Andrew Garfield. Oh <gasps> yes, yes! I could totally see that. I could totally see him as Milo. So we know at the very least the performance of Milo will probably be good. <laughs> I want to know who's playing Kida, but we don't know yet, but... So... Yes, Jack, I, I, I want to know how you feel. <laughs> again, didn't know this was happening. I am... And just, just with they are doing it, and Andrew Garfield is Milo. Just knowing that, I am 50-50. I, I am teetering on the edge of what to think of this. Mm -hmm. Because... Yay, this is a Disney film. Doesn't get as much love as it should. This will be a fun way to tell the story again. New fans. More love for the original and everything. Again, the film wasn't a massive success. So let's take it and do it again. Mm -hmm. That is the exact... like. Before I make my second point, that is this is one of the films I would point to as, yeah, do a live-action remake of that. Do a live-action remake of um, the Black Cauldron. Do do these animated these Disney films that weren't massive successes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now my point that's got me teetering is Atlantis, the animated film, is beautiful to look at. Mm -hmm. The character designs are so different from like anything else in any other the Disney films. That's the make or break. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, cool, but it's such a good-looking film. In, in this medium. Are they going to touch it to make it more dull and boring? Maybe. <sighs> but yeah, it's one of those, you look at the cast of characters that go on the adventure. The, the design, mold, you know, all these great characters that are helping. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to wait and see. I think I might be excited for this film. I am hopeful. I'm I'm teetering. I'm teetering. Yeah. I probably. I mean, like I said, I was so excited for Andrew Garfield because I think he's done a lot of great work recently. Good casting for Milo as well. Yeah, yeah very. Cast I think probably one of the though. best. Probably one of the best casting roles so far, ever. Of the remake. But yes. kind of like. But I kind of agree with Jack. I mean, I don't want to give my hopes up too high. We just probably have to wait and see more things mm. that are revealed, and then kind of work our way. This, I find it interesting because this is kind of a risk for Disney, somewhat. Mm. Because that movie was not... It did not do well when it no. first came out. But it is now like a cult movie. Like Classic. people, People really like that movie now. And I'm, I'm right there with Jack. I want to be excited for this. So my stipulation is... First of all, Atlantis has to look beautiful. It has to be gorgeous. And we've seen that, like, you know, with modern day technology, underwater cities can really work. Like, just look Aquaman. at Wakanda Forever. Just look at Aquaman. Aquaman, I would say, 
currently is the the best one for having a cool underwater city but i really think this movie is gonna live and die on how good that trailer is because yeah. i'm gonna be real i don't know if this has the nostalgia boost that a lot of the other disney remakes have people no. like this movie and i think it's good but like i'm wondering if it's bad if this could be like one of the first really big disney remake failures or on the flip side if it's good it could be the first live action disney remake classic like this really is an interesting idea and because of that it's really piqued me to it like when that trailer yeah. comes out i'm gonna follow it kind of aggressively i hope it doesn't uh, suck because this is a good idea yeah i hope it doesn't suck and on that point of the trailer you you just know the day that trailer comes out whether it's good or not the atlantis fans are going to come out the woodwork everyone who's seen this film who's seen the original is going to be either saying oh yeah okay yeah i love how they did that or they fucked it up well, either way you will see the full yeah, scope of the so, atlantis fan base yeah. emerge yeah. I really love Kida in the original because she's voiced by one of my favorite voice actors, Chris Summer. She, oh, she has such an amazing resume. This ain't Disney. Yeah, and then uh, I think Michael J. Fox was was Milo. Yeah, yep. I miss him. I I hope he's doing okay. He's still <clears throat> rich. He's still very yep. rich. <laughs> like it would be kind of like a like it would be, I I think. If anything, like what we said before, if they bring back like some of the originals as like cameos, that would be kind of cool. I mean, even if it's just like a split second. Yeah, they could, they could be other like crew members on the submarine or something. Uh, Michael just got is a member of the broad. Okay, he does Broadway. So mm -hmm. so Jack, before we continue to the next project, fan cast who should play mole. <laughs> Because I'm thinking the quickest way we ruin this is if we throw Seth Rogen in it. Let's get Seth Rogen as Mole. Just ruin it's it right out the gate. He's pretty good as Donkey thing. Kong. I thought he was fine as Donkey Kong. Imagine that laugh with Mole. <laughs> that would get a laugh out of me, to be fair. I mean... Uh, I think my fan cast for Mole, provided... I think you bring back Josh Provided Gad. he's given the direction Josh and the opportunity to go big with it. Mm -hmm. I think Luis Guzman would be a good call. I'm going to have to Google that. I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking shorter, rounder guy. I think he'd be up for it. I, I, I could see him having fun in that role. Again, I'm thinking... Oh, uh, I agree. Mysterious Island, Luis Guzman. I, I've seen this guy in a ton yeah. of stuff. I agree, he could be a... Actually, actually, in Journey to the Mysterious Island... That, that's a film that I'm sure not many people have watched in a while. Oh, so, ah, in, in that one as well, it's, it's about it's about Atlantis and they they have a submarine and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't know I I I just surprised me just just yeah. surprised me. Yeah. Well, speaking of surprising you, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> let you guys choose. Do you want a tame one next, or do you want one of the the scarier live action remakes next? So you want us We've, to pick our poison? Yeah, just, I think you've just got the just the, know the look at Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Do you want to ease us in, <laughs> or I, do you want to drop us in the deep end? I can ease us in. Just know there's not many of these ease you in ones. So oh. the more we do, the more I'm gonna hit you in the back of the head with a baseball bat with some of these later ones. Oh no. Let's, I mean, let's go easy. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves is getting a remake. I knew about this one because um, Gal Gadot is supposed to be the evil queen. Mm. And then okay. the, I think the girl from West Side Story is Snow White. The, the recent okay. West Side Story. Gal Gadot is the evil queen? That's yeah. That's a little strange to me. As long as her old witch look is done with prosthetics give, give her a big or, or, a, or a different something. actress get a different actress to play the old lady part also an option yeah no i, I can picture as the evil queen that's that's, that's a good one My... I, I see that similar to how i see um angelina jolie as maleficent because maleficent as an animated thing she's one of those like dead-on castings mm. 
because Maleficent has this very distinct face shape. Yeah, and, like I'm sorry, I'm telling you, like Angelina's Angelina, very yeah, pronounced. Yeah, Angelina's um, cheekbones. Cheekbones. cheekbones could cut my cheekbones in half, and I'll be completely fine with it. No, I, th I think that really works. And then Gal Gadot, I'm like, I'm picturing her in. Even if you just took Gal Gadot and dressed her up in the Descendants Evil Queen costume, I'm like, uh -oh. yeah, yeah, no, that works. I don't know. For don't me, know. it's just I don't know why. Maybe it's because I am thinking of the old lady CG they're gonna end up using on her. I I don't know if it will work, but I, I'm well, rooting for ignore it. Ignore that part. Think of her uh, the Evil Queen prior to the transformation. Right. I can't. I, I think that sums up. That, <laughs> that has my approval. As a guy sat in his bedroom. I guess I'm just scared that they're gonna use CGI to do it because you know their track record. But, like, hey, maybe it will be great. I don't have a strong attachment to Snow White. I'll be real. So, mm. I'm I'm just interested to see all the different actors that are going to get to play the dwarves. Yeah. Like, who is going to be our live-action Dopey? I must know. Dopey is, like, my favorite dwarf. He's I always... assume they're going to go the Hobbit route for this and do a lot of, do a lot of perspective stuff and oversized sets and stuff like that. that, that that'll be fun. Peter Dinklage yeah. has Dopey. So, Peter I'm Dinklage has all the dwarves. Yeah, so Snow White, obviously it's just the very first Disney movie, very first Disney princess, the youngest Disney princess at age 14. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and she's she's gonna be, she's gonna turn 100 like, in like 10 plus years from now, but uh, she she kind of was like the stepping stone of like the disney princesses i mean in a way without her we don't have like cinderella and all the other even if she's not perfect because i know in the original she, there's there's some questionable moments mm -hmm. and some ideologies that were great back then but not so great now yeah. but um you know i i actually think She's really sweet, you know. It's it's nice. I mean, I remember I had to watch Snow White for film studies because we had to talk about animation. And yeah, I mean, like like with Neil, I don't really have too much to say about Snow White, mm -hmm. other than that she was the very first Disney princess, the very first Disney movie, and the one that kind of started all. Well, besides Mickey Mouse, of course, but you know, movies wise, yeah. yeah I, I had Snow White flopped. The Disney company, as we know it, would not exist. I mean, yeah, that is very true. Which, which they, makes... put, they put so much into that film that had that tanked. They probably would have gone bankrupt. So, so just like Beauty and Be Beauty and the Beast, this live action movie was inevitable. I will say this: if they do decide to cast little people as the dwarves, I specifically think Warwick Davis would be great as Happy. <laughs> Oh, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. I've been nice to you so far. We've been pretty nice. But here we go. It's time. Bambi. Bambi is getting a live-action remake. I already knew about no, this. No, it's not. I already, I already <laughs> knew about this. You're I, very I right, Jack. Only the hunter who shoots Bambi and Bambi's mom will be in live-action, probably. <laughs> are, are we sure it's not Gaston? <sighs> That'd be neat. That'd, that'd, that'd be, be an fun. interesting yeah, take. Do that. Genuinely. If they do that. And the rest of the film just gets the... It, it's a CGI remake, and it's pretty much the same, and they change a few bits here and there, and have, they, have them say, can you see, feel the love tonight during the daytime, and bullshit like that. <laughs> it's gonna be shit. <laughs> if, 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 they, if they call Luke back to play the hunter, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Look, I know because I think that was I think that was one of the Disney theories was that yeah. it was Gaston. Ah, they're Gaston. all connected. <laughs> Everything's connected, guys. I'm gonna be real. I think there's one other movie here that's harder to adapt than Bambi, but besides that one other movie that's on this list, Bambi might be great. the most difficult because I hope it's not Great Mouse Detective. <laughs> great Mouse really Detective, to my knowledge, is not getting a remake. Oh, thank God. So thank we'll God. just get that out of the way. It's much worse right. than that, if you ask me. So, here's Hold the thing with Bambi. Bambi, <laughs> Bambi is a movie that has a lot of quiet moments. It has a lot of 
just elegant drawings and you really feel for the main character because of how expressive they make Bambi. If they pull a Lion King with this shit, Bambi <laughs> might be the worst live-action remake of them all. Because legitimately, it's just going to be a movie of these slow moments, these quiet moments, and you feel nothing. And that unless, is going to be the blandest un shit. Unless they take the Dumbo route and kind of, or like Crisper Robin mm. or whatever, and kind of in in interact with like human characters and I, I think, do, do some type of save the force, whatever. Well, I, I don't know if I would want that because the whole thing with Bambi is it really is this like, s this innocent story. And I feel like if you throw in all these human characters and you throw in all, all this new stuff, you're kind of taking the magic away from it. But at the same time, if you don't throw in all this new stuff, well, now you're just remaking the Bambi movie in a lesser quality because it's not animated. See, yeah, that's, this is exactly the problem with the Disney movies. They either... I say just don't make Bambi. I feel like this is a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, they either are carbon copy Lion King or they divert from the original movie and make things worse, Mulan. There has to be some type of happy medium in between. Something that everyone can recognize but fix the problems if there are any problems from the original. So then that way it can kind of be a balance for both old and new people. Mm -hmm. Just just let's all just take let's all go back to Little Mermaid for just a second and remember how Sebastian looks <laughs> and realize that they have to do Thumper, they have to do Flower the Skunk, Power. they have to do all the deers, and it's all gonna be CG, and none of it's gonna, like, I don't know why, but cartoons are fake too. Drawings are fake too. But I can relate to Bambi, the character, the drawing, the deer Bambi, a lot more than I think I could a CGI deer with no facial emotions or anything. Like, when Simba is yelling about Mufasa dying, you don't feel much. It's soulless. You, you don't really care. When <laughs> fucking... Did they even do Baby Mai in the Dumbo remake? I gotta be real, I haven't seen that. But I don't... I, I, think they, I think they referenced it. Like, at least in the trailer. They did mm. Baby Mine in the trailer. I don't know about the actual movie. Baby? And then Pink El Pink Elephants was just no that song. It was just like an instrumental with Pink Elephants. Baby Mine is the first time I ever cried while watching a movie because it is such an emotional moment when the trunk comes out and even though she's in the cage, she's able to cradle her baby and she's able to hold him. And it, it's such an emotional scene. I haven't seen the live-action Dumbo remake. I have to imagine it doesn't hit nearly as hard. I have to imagine that this Bambi remake is going to, once again, live or die on, can you make this thing emotional? And so far, yeah. given their track record with Lion King, given their track record with most of these things, I would say Jungle Book is kind of the exception. I felt a little emotional here and there during Jungle Book. But given the track record with most of the stuff they've made, they just shouldn't make this one. Like, it feels like a bad idea to me. I haven't seen... I mean, I haven't watched Lady mm. and the Tramp in a while, but... Oh, but then, and then that had humans in it. Whoops. You got anything to add, Jack? Uh, uh, okay, I've, I've got a few ideas for this one. Mm. I think if you do a shot-for-shot -shot remake, but it's just CG and they look real, real... I would be thoroughly okay with it. Mm. The emotions won't be there, but as you said, Bambi's one of those films that has a lot of these sort of quiet moments, or just, you know, it, it's spring, it's the song, it's just all the wildlife and everything. Shot for shot, do it exactly as <laughs> it already is, but just show how good the technology is. Mm. This is how real we can make it look. Just have it be really impressive visually. That's one route you take it. The other one is the Lion King route. The other one, and I've had this idea in my head, and I think 
this is the best option, but they're definitely not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Again, make it all look real. But here's how you have them be real animals. And you make it work for a live action. You get David Attenborough to do all the narration over top. Have it be a documentary style, like all his Planet Earth stuff. That is humorous as shit. <laughs> I think that'd be brilliant. Notice how the hunters approach Bambi's mother. <laughs> yeah. No, I feel like you'd be on board like, that. like Gaston. <laughs> like Gaston. Yeah, so, that, that, that's my thought on this. I, I'll need to see the trailer because th this is, again, this is a film that will live and die on mm. the animation because it's not a live action film. It's another animated film. I, so I, if it looks shit, it looks shit. I'm, that's where I'm at with this. I'm going into this with like. I, I think this is flawed at premise. I gotta be real. So to me, I, I don't even... I have no hope for that one. I honestly don't really care for Bambi. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think the original Bambi is cute. It's adorable. But I never really got into Bambi. I remember watching the direct DVD sequel to Bambi, Bambi 2. But it was like a mid cool but... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> But I kind of like the father-son relationship of that one. <laughs> hmm. So, you know, we, we just did Bambi. Let's go into one that's not easy at all, but we've talked about it a little, so maybe the blow is lessened. Let's go into Lilo and Stitch. So, here's the thing. People got really mad the other day because they were like, oh, the character Bubbles isn't going to be in it. Turns out Bubbles is going to be in it, so that's good. Oh, and Nani. Nani's, Nani's casting. Here's... Here's my thing. Here's my thing. And this is this is where I stand. This movie needs to have a lot of heart. Really needs to nail the heart. How are they going to do Gantu and Peekly well in live action? How do you do Peekly well in live action? I, I, I don't get it. The design doesn't really fit for me. I know they have casted both Gantu and Peekly. Um... I'll actually Google what that casting is while we talk hmm. about it. But wait, wait, wasn't Zach Galifianakis cast as someone? I forgot. Yes, who. he's Gantu, which I don't think is going to be a Gantu good casting. or Jamba. He's Jamba. Jamba. My bad, Jamba. Jamba. Okay. okay, that works. I can see that. I I don't know. It, it's just it feels like this was such like kind of a, a lightning in a bottle movie. Like, it kind of feels like Lilo and Stitch. It's kind of a miracle it worked, in my opinion. Yeah, it's one of those films that, like, I'm sure in development is like, oh, we've got this idea for this, and here's this incredibly marketable character. They're like, okay, cool, we're greenlighting this project. Lilo and Stitch is, like, one of those films that, on paper, this should not work. Mm. I, I will mention that um, I, I do believe... I had a thought in my head and then it disappeared. My brain has failed me. Uh, I, I will mention, I do believe that with this movie, they might cut stuff like hamster veal, perhaps, because I think those are some of the goofier elements. But they're... Wait, but what, was hamster veal in the original or was that more like the direct-to-DVD and TV he, series? He's in it. He's just not in it yeah. a ton. I think he's in it anyways. I guess I could. I don't remember him being in it, though. I think it was more like the directed dvd sequels and the I TV series. I retroactively added him into it in my mind. Have I edited him into the first film? Was I remember, I, yeah, I remember <laughs> yeah, Gantu and... I remember, uh, I remember the original climax of what they were originally going to do before they had to change it. Oh, really? Yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. Have you not heard this? I have You didn't know, but... Yeah. No, so... so um, You're American, man. Come on. Yeah, so... I'm American as shit. I yeah, so... Of it. Yeah, let me, let me explain. Um, Trigger, anyone who was affected by this event, I am sorry. Please skip to whatever time frame, because we're going to talk about something serious, just for warning. Oh? So... Bef so 9-11 happened. 
Oh, yeah. And originally in production, Lilo and Stitch, the climax was going to take place in like some type of city with like the Twin Towers or whatever. Um, so it was. Yeah. No, not to interrupt. But, no, it's uh, okay. no, so you know the big red spaceship? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was going to be a plane. Um, oh. And it was going to be flying through a city close to buildings. Oh. Yeah. But because, yeah. but because of the events of 9-11, they had to change it to what we have now. Yeah. You can find clips of it uh, yeah, still online like... on YouTube and everything. It's, it's, re it's a really interesting like story. Um, and, and the change works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I like the big red spaceship. I always wanted to toy with it. Clear, clearly they had like uh, clearly they had time to like fix that because I didn't yeah. I didn't notice it towards the end. Yeah. But like uh, also Hamsterville was not in the original. Yeah, I googled right. it. That blows my mind. I thought he was at like the very yeah. end. Oh, I well, thought he was right at the start. I thought I thought I thought there was like mention of him in like the trial and stuff. No, okay. yeah, it was definitely like the 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 start of the sequel movies and the TV series. That's when he's more prominent. In that case, I hope they add him. <laughs> I I think that, that would be with cool. Lilo yeah. and Stitch, there there are two ways to do this movie. Either a you lean heavily into the space stuff and try to make it as fun as possible or you lean either harder into the the emotional stuff like really focus on Nani and Lilo as characters how they feel about this whole situation and it seems that with the casting of this like other person who works for child services it seems like they're going in that direction mm. i i'm wondering how that will pan out if that's a good idea I, I just feel like this is going to be incredibly hard to do. And given their track record, I don't know if they can do it. I do see it as possible, but only if you got, like, a, some great writers, great director, some, like, really impressive CG on these characters who yeah. I am utterly hating to imagine in CG. Like, <laughs> Jesus I... Christ, how's Jumba going to look? <laughs> I want to hear Hawaiian Roller Coaster Ride because that's my favorite song from the movie. It's mm -hmm. the one of the more iconic scenes from the original movie. I want to hear, even if it's just a snippet, I want to hear something. <laughs> I'm looking forward to hearing Elvis music in, in, in a movie again. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Austin Butler. <laughs> um... But let's let's go on. Anything else to say about Lilo and Stitch before we move on? So um, I mentioned earlier my thoughts for how you make Stitch work in this. Hmm. So you avoid the ugly Sonic route, of course. For one, you keep the voice actor. He was one of the directors of the original film. He just did the voice for Stitch. He's like, oh, I want it to sound like yeah. it's similar to Brad Bird Chris for Ed the Mode. Where he's like, was it, was it Chris we, we brought in actors. And Brad Bird, like, said, oh, no, 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 do a voice more like this. And he did, like, an Edna voice. And like, you just do it. Okay, fine, I will. <laughs> Same thing for Stitch. He was like, oh, the director just recorded all the sound effects uh... for, like, the temp version until they cast someone. I do believe he's coming this. back. I do believe that voice actor's coming back. Good. Yeah, I think, that is so I think, iconic. I think it's Chris Sanders. I think that's Yeah, yeah. Because there's only been, again, there's the anime. So because of that, there's, like, a Japanese guy who's done the voice of Stitch. Um, and then for the dub of that, I think there's um, someone else has done the English dub of Stitch for that anime. I did not Other know there was an anime. I didn't know yeah. there was an anime of Lilo and Stitch. Um, but oh, visually, how you make them work is you turn to the Disney Park Imagineers. Mm -hmm. Because, so for one, we've all seen... Yeah, you know, here's this animatronic of Baby Groot walking around on the park and everything. Well, not actually on the park, you know, on the tech displays and stuff for the park. You look at the Stitch rides and stuff they've done for the park. So they have, here's a Stitch animatronic. And it looks good. Furry and blue and practical. Use that as your reference. Just directly remake that. Honestly, I think Stitch would look better as, like, a puppet of some sort. I feel like the more they go real with this stuff, the less it works for me. You know, yeah. like they just kind of like they kind of look uncanny, like Sebastian and Flounder from mm, Little yes. Mermaid. Yes, where I think you can get away with that with Stitch is he is an alien. We've never we we all know what a crab looks like. Mm. We don't know what a Stitch looks like. 
in live action. That is true. I, so I think you can have him be more cartoony. You can still give him the big just black bug eyes and stuff. Mm. I still have it be cute. And, and we've seen this can work with characters like Pikachu and Sonic. So like, yeah. Pikachu. If you do it right, Stitch could look really cute. If you do this wrong, this is going to be horrible. And this is going to look real bad. Yeah. So next up, here's the thing. I'm 50-50 on this next one. Because I feel like there's a chance they could improve on the original, maybe fix some of its flaws. I feel like there's a chance they could completely fuck any good potential out of this. So we're going to discuss that here and now. Hunchback of Notre Dame. I already knew about this one. Jack did not look happy a second <laughs> ago. I kind of already. Aside knew. from Atlantis, I'm not happy with any of these, to be fair. That's fair. I, I like how this discussion is less of, man, I really hope it's great, and just the discussion has become, how do they not fuck it up? <laughs> Which is good, because yeah. that, we, we talk for a lot less that way. There's a, there's a lot less ways to be like, oh yeah, here, here's, here's how we get the bare go wrong. Versus, here's the few things they could do that we think might work. Are they going to bring back the talking gargoyles? If they do, I hope they like do what they did in the Broadway show, where the the gargoyles aren't real in the Broadway show. Mm -hmm. They're just yeah. They're just imaginary, and uh, Quasimodo is making them up. Honestly, mm -hmm. I feel like they could pull a lot of stuff from the Broadway show, especially with what happens with if you know, you know. But uh, there's not really a air quotes. There's not really a happy ending to the Broadway show, if you catch my drift. Yeah. Which is Esmeralda. how it goes in the book. Es mm -hmm. yep. Esmeralda is, well, she looks a little deadish, so um, if that's not going to be... That's going to be interesting, because, you know, Disney is supposed to be this happy, magical, mm -hmm. family-friendly, and Esmeralda is the leading lady, and... I don't know if people are going to be happy about that if they mm. decide to go that route. Sure. Me, yeah. I don't care. I don't care. I mean, obviously, I, like I said, I am very girly, but I do know that there are times where you kind of have to go a little dark. And sometimes that's okay. It's okay to go a little dark. Not everything is sunshines and rainbows. You can be a little dark and you can still convey the message at the same time. Well, I, I should mention that the producer of this movie is Josh Gad, and Josh Gad has said that the script is one of the best he's ever read. Like, he, he thinks it's going to be great. However, I, didn't know that. I will say this if you're producing a movie and you think the script is shit, you can't just say the script is shit. So. <laughs> True. So, is he just saying that because he doesn't want to get in trouble or. I, I, this is the one that I believe is currently filming. Like, this is the live-action remake that is currently being made. I think he actually posted today that the script is fully done. So... Hmm. It, it, In production. Yeah, so... Well, I, I think it's begun filming. I don't know. He, he may have said, like, filming. If, if the script is only just finished, they're yeah, definitely it, not going to start filming. What I'm saying, Jack, is I, I don't remember exactly what he said. He either okay. said it started filming or the script is done. It, but it, it's a, about that stage. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, so we'll be seeing this in the near future, but it's currently filming, so if there's any if there's any on this list we have the potential to change with this video, maybe it's this one. Who knows? <laughs> okay, for this, my hope is, um, yes, play with the darkness a bit more, which is, I, I hope, where they're going, if that it'd be one of the best scripts Josh Gad is right. I hope that means that it'll be a bit more dramatic. It'll be a bit more of a like meaty story. I think you don't necessarily have to kill Esmeralda. I think you can still have her live like in the original animated film, not book. But I want I want you to play it. That oh yeah, the gargoyles. Yeah, they're not real. They're not alive. They're not participating in the fight at the end and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you, 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 you basically, you still have that scene of Frollo, like, coming up to Quasimodo's, like, you just have the scene, like, start when Frollo enters the room. 
and Quasimodo is like talking to them. Mm. Just have them be, they are just actual statues. Not that, oh, he's imagining, don't, don't show us what he's seeing. Just have it be like kind of sad from our, from the audience perspective. Of, ah, he's like, ah, have it be like Wilson. Have it be Wilson and Castaway. Mm. That's what you do with the gargoyles. Oh, you don't ever show cool. them move. If they, even if it is imaginary. If you just, you just hear... Be, he talks to them. He's that lonely. Well, wouldn't it be cool if you, like, heard the voices, but, like, it's just a still frame of a not-moving, not-speaking gargoyle, and you just get the implication, like, oh, he's imagining they're real. I think that could be... That could, you could do oh, that. I, I worry that, that could, like, that could, like, that could like turn very goofy very like, easily. Like, like Kristoff from Frozen. You know how he talks for, for Sven? Where he's making up the voices. That yeah. would be sad. That would be real it's, sad it, to watch. Uh, again, I think if you do that, uh, you do a more comedic route, which, yeah, they may well do. It may be just the same sort of tone as the original, but I, I hope for a slightly darker take on it. I hope yeah, so. You know, I, I will, in I will, a darker I will, film, Hellfire will be so good. Oh, well, yes, Hellfire. I, I will admit, I think I said this before, I wasn't the biggest fan of this movie as a kid. Because, again, I'm very girly. I, I like things, you know, happy and joy. But sure. as I gotten older and starting to learn more, more about mature things, I realized that, you know, this movie is very important. Mm -hmm. it, it, I know there were some that were kind of wondering, like, why are they making a movie based off of a very dark and depressing book <laughs> and stuff? But like what we said, like, the dark elements can work. It doesn't have to go completely dark because I know Disney ain't, ain't going to do that. But just bringing some of the darker elements from like the original, mm. like the Hellfire scene is very iconic and it's just, especially like the animated like Esmeralda as the fire part. That, looked, that was pretty cool. And That's gonna I, I, the death scene is going to be interesting. <laughs> Let's just say that. What? I'm, I'm just going to say it. If they cut, if if there's news that they cut Hellfire from the movie, I'm not going to go see it. <laughs> no. I mean, Hellfire is considered one of the best Disney villain songs of all time. It, it might be the best villain song ever written. Arguably. Yeah. Some people Hellfire say and heard. the Bells of Notre Dame, like the opening number. Oh, yeah. Jesus. So, those those awesome. are my favorite Disney songs, full stop. So, okay. really, Bells of Notre Dame, you can do that as just having it instrumental. That's fine. Hellfire, no, you do Hellfire. I actually really like uh, God Help the Outcast. I think it's a really sweet, sentimental song. Uh, imagine Help the Outcast. Miracles is fun. I think Disney is going to have to go dark with it. Because, like, animated, the, the King of Fools scene is still pretty hard-hitting where they're all throwing the fruit at him and shit. I think in live action, that's going to have a whole new undertone, and it's going to be really... It, that should be hard to watch in live action. Yeah. So, like, I think if Disney goes dark with it, this could work. Do I think they're going to do that? No, I don't. If they, yeah, I don't, I don't know if they have the guts. I'm sorry. I love you guys, but I don't think you guys have the guts to do that. So, have you guys both seen the live action Mulan? Yes. I've seen half of it. Sure. Relative. So I've not seen any of it. Would you... The quality of it notwithstanding, would you say that that is a darker take on the animated film? I mean... I... I no, think... because of one scene in the original. In, in the original, there's this really vicious scene where, like, the villain is like he's captured these two guys and he's like interrogating them yeah. and then he sends off the guy and he both guys then he looks to his like second in hand and he's like how many people does it take to carry a message and then the guy loads up his bow and he's like just one yeah and then and then after after the at the end of a girl worth fighting for the song mm -hmm. abruptly ends and red red is a pretty unique color cuz red like you see the red skies and red can also represent blood mm -hmm. so there's a lot of bloodshed and you see the villages burnt down the soldiers dead and then Mulan sees this little doll or she yeah she finds this little doll and it is just heartbreaking like there's no laughing there is it's like completely silent I mean there's some people that say a few words but it's just it's heartbreaking 
and then mm-hmm. Shang's father was killed in the battle. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. we don't we we don't even see his body. We only saw his helmet, and we already knew. Yeah, he's gone. I, I that would was. Really- I would say the live action movie is grittier in some scenes because there are battle scenes where people are dying left and right. But like, I was more meaning like an overall tone. Like, do, do you, like they, they can tweak it. They can mm-hmm. get rid of the gargoyle song. They I can say, I wouldn't say completely. tone down some of the upbeat music. They can. I, I'm gonna say that they would have to go further than what they okay. did in Mulan to okay. to make Hunchback work. That being said. I have hopes for Hunchback. I think it yeah. could be good of this list. I think it's one of the ones where it's like, that could work. They could improve on it a bit. Hmm. This is the one that I, I I want to be hopeful for, but, like, I I don't know, man. I think my the story and everything, I'll be interested to see what they do. Whether they keep it, they make it more lighthearted, they make it darker. E- either way, whatever they end up doing tonally and story-wise... Hmm. Similar to, I think, it's going to be inc- possibly this is like your biggest challenge out of any of these remakes. I think because of the nature of Hunchback, is Frollo and Quasimodo. Mm-hmm. Who who's playing them? Because you're not gonna get you're not gonna cast an actor and be like, ha, you're gonna be Quasimodo like based on how they look, obviously. But then. Are, are you going to cast an actor and put them in makeup to play an ugly, deformed person? Mm. That, that's that's going to be interesting. And then Frollo, it's Tony J's voice. Uh. Why? Oh, man. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, mm, I, I am worried. I, I get, like Atlantis, I do think this is one of the ones that, yeah, you, you should do a live-action remake of this. But it's going to be one heck of a challenge. Oh, yeah. And yeah, and you know that if it is bad, it's going to be, like, really bad. Like, it's yeah. not going to be, like... Uh, I haven't seen the Lady and the Tramp movie, the live-action nope, one. Either. But, like, if it's bad, okay. if it's bad, I feel like people will be like, eh, it's Lady and the Tramp, no big. With this, if it's bad, people are going to get pissed because, like... Hunchback of Notre Dame has really hit, like, cult status to, like, a major degree at this point. So, Mm. like, I I could see people getting very upset if this is bad. Let us keep trucking along, though. We're gonna... We're gonna take... Also, just had the thought. Mm -hmm. Notre Dame in flames, that as well is gonna be interesting given a few years ago Notre Dame went up in flames. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we're we're getting to some of the we're we're getting to some of the stinkers. Oh boy. But we're we're going to we're going to start, we're going to go a little easier. There is going to be a sequel to the Aladdin remake. I already knew about this one. Mm-hmm. I oh. I was just wondering because uh we all know what happened with Will Smith last year and it, I believe yeah. he's coming back. I believe that's been said. I was gonna say, well, in Aladdin 2, it's not Robin Williams, so they could recast him. <laughs> that would be really funny. Yeah. And then in the third movie, they bring him back. Yeah. That'd be great. I just wonder, After I, he I has doubt, sufficiently apologized. I, yeah, I doubt if they're gonna go on, like, the direct DVD sequel route where they bring back Jafar or whatever. Because sometimes people like to forget the Disney sequels ever happen, but. But I also, but the third movie, I like the, that new villain, Saluk, mm. and like the 40 Thieves. I thought that was pretty yeah. interesting. I I think doing Return of Jafar would be kind of hard for them for multiple mm. reasons. Number one, Jafar is nowhere near as cool a villain as he was in... An animated form. Yeah, but... Yeah. what they, they didn't even give him the Prince Ali reprise, so what? You're, you're not giving him your only second rate. Mm-hmm. But... And it sucks because if you're gonna add things to make these movies longer, give him a, give him a villain song and that reprise, like or, add that shit. Or, or they can bring. I don't know. If this is gonna be possible, but I actually really like the Aladdin series, and there's like a lot of villains from that from that series that, could that I could potentially see them bringing in for the sequel, yeah, like. 
the one that looks like Aladdin, but he's not. <laughs> and then I think is it Mirage, the Cleopatra cat. I believe so. Yeah. And then there but was there there was a there was a female genie in that as well. Oh yeah, there was. And then they they crossed over with the Hercules cartoon. Oh, no, I think yes. I remember. Yeah, we reviewed that forever ago. Because I was oh. so yeah, I was so amazed that existed. So we reviewed it. Oh yeah, I told you about that. I, yeah. like, but... I think I don't have much to say on this one. My my, my thought is just the Aladdin live action remake was thoroughly meh. Mm -hmm. There were bits I liked. There were bits that sucked. I think for this sequel, you just tell a new story. This is a sequel to that film and not an adaptation of anything that's happened already. I, I, I think you do that. I agree, because the, the other problem I had with them doing Return of Jafar is Iago is such a big part of that story, and he doesn't even talk in the remake. Yeah, rest in peace, Gilbert. Gilbert Godfrey. It's... I mean, do you do you bring Alan Tudyk back? Do you do you give him more lines? Do you just say the parrot can talk now? I'm kind of with you, Jack. I, I think if you, you could use magic to make him talk, but then again, mm -hmm. Gilbert Godfrey, you're not, you're not going to do any better. So I'm, I'm kind of with you. I think it's just a better idea if they do a whole new original story. I would still like whole to see world. Jafar. <laughs> I still would like to see Jafar come back if they could somehow. If they could somehow fix him, you know, make him better. There's there's room to do that now because it's ah oh, he's trapped in, now he's got now he's a genie now he can do all these new things he could he could be like more threatening mm -hmm. you can play around you can I I think I think there is the possibility to do that I don't expect it I don't think they will I don't think it'll work but you could there there is room there for that. Well, let's talk about two other sequels that Mufasa. have no chance of being good. Yeah, we'll start with Mufasa. Yeah, sorry, Jack. No. Jack, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I had to be the one to tell you this. Wait, I we think it's a are getting... It is a prequel. It's a prequel, not a sequel. It would you say that like it makes it better. It would be kind of hard to do a sequel about Mufasa now, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Given they did a shot in the remake of just here's a ball of shit, <laughs> literally, the sequel can just be his rotting corpse. To be honest, <laughs> Simba's gone insane. He's puppeting his corpse around. Like, what do you think, Dad? I don't know, Simba. <laughs> I think we should be nice to the Pride Lands. <laughs> Why, why not just do the sequel to Lion King? If you're gonna do it, why not? Lion King has a good sequel. Don't get me wrong, I don't want them to ruin the sequel either. But I think it's even lamer to do this, oh yeah, Scar and Mufasa prequel series. If they... <laughs> yeah, work on a little bit of Lion Guard canon. Mm. <sighs> Lion Guard. I actually kind of, I actually kind of like Lion Guard. It was. I haven't seen it. I've seen Scar's like song in that where he it, they do like a prequel thing of Scar and like how he got the scar. And I'm like, okay, cool. I I that, watch some of that. Reference yeah. that. That'd be fun. But dear God, no. Yeah, no. I hope the, this gets canceled. And it is live action, by the way. It is the Lion King movie. Is it live action or is it CG? You, you know, you know what it is. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> to clarify, I don't hate CGI. I hate the the premise of that being like, oh yeah, it's a live action film. No, it fucking isn't. <laughs> yeah, I, that's when, when they say like, oh, live action Lion King is the highest grossing one for like animated. I was like, I, is it though? I thought that Frozen was. Uh, uh, or Frozen yeah. Two, you, you know, maybe Super Mario Brothers might be on there on its uh, way. Mario Brothers has the highest opening weekend of an animated film. Yay! I, take that. Of all the yeah. characters in Lion King, though, of all the characters, I could see like, oh, something with Timon and Pumbaa that could be really fun. Oh, like maybe you do series? something and put it on Disney Plus. Yeah, yeah. Does not need to be a whole film. Have, have it be a wee thing on Disney Plus. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Oh, like like the Timon and Pumbaa series from the nineties. Yeah, or, or even Lion King one and a half. That that movie they did. I could see. They should do that actually. Yeah, yeah. I think I that. Think, could I, be fun. I think that's a fun thing. I, I'd, I'd be I'd be totally on board with that if you got the voice actors back mm -hmm. for Timon and Pumbaa from the live action and have them just do one and a half. 
I, I wouldn't mind them doing, like, a new Timon and Pumbaa story. Like, do a story like One and a Half with Timon and Pumbaa, but make it live action. That could be fine. The idea of going... Mufasa and Scar. I hate to be that guy. Mufasa is a good character because he's a good, like, mentor character... Mufasa's not interesting to follow a whole story with, and maybe Scar could be, but this is live action Scar. This isn't Jeremy Iron Scar. So like, yeah. I, I super don't see this going well. Especially it's, it's two characters I don't care about. Especially maybe because I, they set up that. Maybe I should include this in my essay about Lion King and how. <laughs> they they set up that romance between Scar and. Uh, uh, Asa, uh, what what is Mufasa's wife's Zira? name? Oh, never mind. Sarabi. Sarabi, yeah. They they set up that romance thing, so I almost promise you that's what the show is going to be about. The show is going to be about Scar and Sarabi maybe getting close, and then Mufasa stepping in. Their relationship is ruined, and we're going to see how Scar got the scar in this canon. If that's his real name. <laughs> I do wonder if his name was Scar before getting the Scar. I think... I, That's I keep, something they're going to need to acknowledge. That, mm -hmm. I keep hearing that wasn't his original name, but I could be wrong. Well, let's let's move on to our other spinoff slash sequel slash prequel. LeFou and Gaston. Oh, uh, I already heard about this one. I thought they canceled it for some reason, but... It's still going to my knowledge. If it's gotten <laughs> canceled... God bless them for just taking it off. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna be real. This has more potential than Mufasa. Oh, um, yeah. Well, because these are two characters that I could see following for a whole story. Like, Gaston, mm -hmm. if Luke Evans can really get a, a bit more full of himself and a bit more goofy with Gaston, I could totally see a whole movie or show with these two characters going on. Um, mm -hmm. The fact that it's a prequel, though... Kind of, kind of offsets me a little because I'm like, well, well, what story are you gonna do with them then? And also, this is a show about a villain, so like, is this is it a show or is it a film? I'm not 100 percent sure. I oh. I don't know if Disney has. I heard it was. Set. I think I heard. I think I heard it was supposed to be a a movie? Question mark. I I I'm leaning more towards. It's a show. project. Let's treat it like it's a show or a movie. Let's say it for both. Because either way, I don't think it's going to be good. <laughs> again, okay. again, like, like, I, like I said in the beginning, I am all for LGBTQ plus representation. I think we need more of that. Mm. But I'm right there with you. I feel with Gas this, this, this version of Gaston and LeFou, I think it was forced on. Pandering. Mm -hmm. In yeah. my opinion. I think... They wanted to do it just because, hey, we can say, oh, we have we have these two characters that are part of your community. That should count, right, guys? I I thought it I was. I think it was just Lafu. Yeah, I thought it was too subtle as well because. Yeah, it, it's non-existent. It's like oh, he's dancing with the guy at the end. That's it. They imply yeah, it Star like Wars. twice. We've got we've got the first gay Star Wars character, and it, it's it's two girls that kiss in one of the final shots that's cut out for international audiences. Meanwhile, just look over at Owl House and how progressive it's gotten. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad it ended, but that was a fantastic it was a, finale. It was a great ending. <laughs> I, I'm sad it's gone too, but like, I, I'm in the same boat as it as I was with Gravity Falls. Sad you're gone, I'll miss you forever. <laughs> I mean, I've heard so much good things about Owl House. My thing is, I have a very, I have a fear yeah. of Owl House. Mm -hmm. So... Oh, there are many moments in that show that would not help you. Especially if Hootie. If I wasn't scared of owls, I would totally watch the Owl House, because I know it's so good, but I have this fear, and I don't want to be traumatized. So. And, and I love, would traumatize you. <laughs> I love the theory that's come out now since the finale and, like, interviews. is like that Hootie is a tapeworm to a titan. Oh, God. That's true. I, I, I love that. That is, that is so Owl House. Wait, what? It, you're, oh. you're never gonna understand unless you know who Hootie is. Yeah. And you don't want to know who Hootie is. 
I, okay. Hootie is a. I love him. But... Hootie is an owl character that can be a little scary. Oh. He's like a worm with an owl head on the end. He's an owl tube. <laughs> owl tube. That is what he is. I I I seriously hope I'm gonna be able to go to sleep tonight. <laughs> Have fun. So let's move on. Um, no, I think I am. This is the one I'm probably okay. Cautiously optimistic, and it is the only one that I am applying that term to, because I liked Luke Evans as Gaston. I liked um, Josh Gad as LeFou. I think the two of them and their dynamic works. Gaston could be hammier. Mm -hmm. LeFou could be gayer. And I think this is your opportunity to do that. I think people were thoroughly disappointed with the hype, quote-unquote, around how, what they were going to do with LeFou, and they did fuck all. Mm. Gaston play him, have, have Luke enjoy play, play it more like the cartoon they can do something fun they, this can be sort of I'm picturing kind of an Emperor's New Groove vibe sort of story with mm -hmm. these two my biggest thing though, no matter what you do Gaston is the villain of Beauty and the Beast we, we should love to hate him yeah, you don't can't, make us just love him you can't redeem Gaston in this or it's not Gaston no, no. So, so moving forward, we got three left. We're, oh boy. Okay. We're on the ending stretch here. Oh boy. I would argue these are the three ones that are probably the worst. But, so, so first of all, this is kind of the easiest of the three. This is the easy one of the three. Sword in the Stone. Could okay. be okay. You know, I think that's actually not that bad, because I didn't really like Sword in the Stone. <laughs> I, I... I thought it was kind of... I don't even remember how it went. All I remember was Mad Mad Mim for like... And, and I don't think she's in that movie for that long anyway. No. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's all I remember is the Mad Mad Mim scenes and that's it. I think she's, I think she's in it roughly the same amount of time, if not less, than Oogie Boogie is in Nightmare Before Christmas. Wow. She, she's not in it much at all. Which is, like, okay, cool. My thoughts on this little, like, Atlantis and, like I said, do a remake of Black Cauldron. Yeah. This is, this is a film that similarly wasn't a massive success. It's not a brilliant film. Here's your chance. Here's something to improve upon, rather than here's something that's brilliant. Why are you touching it? Stop it, please. No. You know, Melissa McCarthy would have been kind of good as Mad Madam Men as well. Yeah. I mean... If I had, if I had to think how they can accrue, because if I remember correctly, it's it's like the younger years of Arthur, mm -hmm. so, yeah, and kind of like it's... the Knights of like the Round Table. So, unless they want to kind of go on that route and make Mad Madam M the actual main antagonist, instead of her just being a one-off thing, mm -hmm. that's just me. So. There, there is, I don't have much to say about Sword in the Stone, so if you guys have anything else to add. Well, I think the magic could look cool in CG. Yeah. So I'm kind of hopeful for it. I'll be real. Yeah, I think similarly to... I forget which other thing I said this for. You you will need to make it kind of a new story. Yeah, you'll have the original to add is, stuff. Oh, Merlin finds Arthur and takes him under his wing and is like, ah, you're, you're, you're gonna be king one day. So I'm gonna teach you these, like, lessons. And then we'll fight Mad Mad and win, and then you'll pick up the sword and the stone and woohoo. It, it, it's almost, it's kind of episodic, which is weird for a film. Mm. And, you know, having, okay, here's your sequence where they're both squirrels. Here's the sequence where they're fish. Here's this sequence where... It'd be a bit weird. But if you do something new with it, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I am... This is one of the ones that I think, okay, yes, you. I am perfectly fine with doing a live-action remake of this. I, like I said, I think the only thing I really want is just if Mad Mad Men is the actual main antagonist. Yeah. Of... Ha have an actual antagonist in that story. Yeah. It might be cool. Um, 
So I, I am actually, I'm going to have to redact myself. There is one more we have to talk about. I was thinking about skipping it, but I guess we shouldn't. Because they haven't talked about this one in a while. And also, I can't for the life of me think of anything we could say about this one. But I'm going to bring it up anyways, because it's here on the list. So, I'm, I'm going to read bare verbatim what the list says. An Aladdin spinoff featuring Prince Anders is also in development for Disney+. Plus. Do any of you guys remember Prince Anders? Is he the one where uh, he said that there's there's two rear ends? Yes, he is the guy who like tries to like court Jasmine before Aladdin does, and that's it. That's his role in the movie. He tries to court her, he fails, he leaves. This did get announced at one point. Has an idea. They haven't talked about it since, so I have a feeling it got canceled. Oh. Because Please tell me it did. Please tell me that. I, what can you know? I can't tell you that because I don't know. But I really. I. That's just stupid. It, it just seems dumb. Like what's the? He's just some random side character. Why do we need to know more about him? He he's a rich a hole. So now here's the thing, though. What if now? Just roll with me for a minute. What if this is going to be the Disney live-action remake Andor? Like, what if we don't know nothing, anything about him? We don't care about him. That's the point. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the one character who would have to have a completely original story. So because of that, I'm actually rooting for Prince Andor. But, oh wait, his name is Anders and Andor. There you go. Prince Anders could be great. Because it has zero connection to Aladdin at all. <laughs> Jack, do you have any uh, strong opinions about... I think, okay, if this is, as we say, a project for Disney+, Plus, then yeah, I, I can see this being like the like the Simpsons, um, like Star Wars special, the Simpsons, Disney villains. Like, ah, okay, it's a wee, um, maybe at most half an hour. It's a movie. Fun thing of, sh show us this... this pompous character yeah yeah it's an hour long <laughs> movie at least it's gonna be a movie <laughs> mm. i don't think it's gonna be good i don't even know if it will get made but in 2022 apparently the script is written so it's looking like it's gonna get made my opinion on it i'm rooting for you anders secretly be great <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm flicking through the rest of the um the actor I want to say his name. I have to scroll back up. Billy May Hughesen. Mm. Looking through the rest of his IMDb, he's like, ah, he was in No Time to Die. He's he's the voice of the Joker in a Harley Quinn thing that's coming out this year. Velvet Buzzsaw. I'm looking through. He's like, ah, it's not an amazing filmography. <laughs> Black Mirror. No, I'm, I have to assume before them to have even said, "Ah, oh, yeah, we're this is this is in production. This is a thing that we're going to be doing." They either have a really good script or they've got a great idea for this thing. There's got to be some reason they're doing this. Maybe because. I didn't know this character's name. What? I, I remember in... It's just perplexing. Well, I I wonder... The only reason I could see to give him something is because I know the character he replaced, uh, I believe the character's name was Ahmed in the original, uh, I know that in the, the Star Kid fan-made musical Twisted, they gave him, like, his own little arc. Yes. And that's literally... Okay. That's literally the only reason I can think of to give this guy a story... Because literally that character had one in that musical. So maybe they'll just spin it off and he'll be like a comedy thing that has nothing to do with Agrabah or anything. Yeah. But that's what I imagine it'll be. I hope so. so yeah, they, I mean, they, 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 must, they must have something in mind. Oh, this is what you were talking about. The Lego set for the live action Little Mermaid. Yeah. Yeah, I think it just yeah, I think it just got officially revealed today. Oh. Yeah, it, it leaked like a week ago or something. Why is there only two of Ariel's sisters? Because 
minifigures are the most expensive part of a set, and the more they put in, the more expensive it will be. So, is that supposed to be Flounder? That is supposed to be Flounder. He doesn't look like Flounder. Neither does Flounder! Where's Sebastian's eyes? Honest, Cher, sadly, sadly what? and truthfully, I think the Lego set version of those characters looks better than the movie. <laughs> because at least it's a toy. <laughs> at least I can excuse that. It's a physical prop. Why does it look better than the million dollar movie? <laughs> okay, these are the last two. And I will go ahead and say I think these are the ones that are probably the worst to even try. Don't tell me. Nightmare Before Christmas. So that's Emily. Nightmare Before Christmas is the is one of them. What was the other one you said? Moana. Oh, I forgot to even mention Moana. <laughs> okay, let's do Moana. Let's do Moana, and then we'll, and then we'll get this reveal of the other one and then Nightmare. Mm -hmm. So, here's the thing: the floodgates are open, ladies and gents. They can do CGI live action movie remakes now. And Moana is going to be the first one. I am mixed on this because on one hand, I like the story of Moana and I feel like I know they're not going to do this. But if they actually put Dwayne Johnson and, and, and an actress to play Moana on a boat, if they actually build some of these sets, if they actually devote themselves to this, and really lean into the music, really lean into the visual style, this could be good. However, I have a feeling that they're going to put the same amount of quality that they put towards the other ones towards this. To which my response is, Moana just came out! Why are we doing this? <laughs> She's not even 10 years old yet. We're, we're, this is, this is the, as this video, this is recorded in 2023, so... Uh, she's not even 10 years old yet. Tangled's older! I, I can't believe they're not starting with Tangled. That one makes more sense to me to do in live action. I'm surprised they didn't mention anything about Tangled, and I keep hearing a lot of fan a lot of fans want uh share share to be Gothel. I I I can see that. Honestly, I can see that. If they do it, I would like them to just have Zachary Levi play Flynn. Yeah, yeah. But um I I think that with Moana, God, the CG water is gonna look so weird. But um, I mean, Avatar. I mean, yeah, fair enough. Fair we, enough. We we have phenomenal CG water, and Disney. Th 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 that's all Disney. That's all their tech. They'll just take the same engine, hopefully. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, genuinely, they can. I'm not pro. Dwayne the Rock Johnson playing Maui. I don't know if I like it because I like that he's the voice actor, but he doesn't really he doesn't really look like Maui. Like Dwayne the Rock Johnson is super buff, while Maui was more heavy set. Maui Maui like had all these tattoos. Don't get me wrong, it's a remake. You can probably still make this work, but like, what was the big criticism we all had out of Moana? What was the big criticism that everyone kept bringing up? Dwayne the Rock Johnson can't sing. That's the one I kept hearing everywhere. I mean, I know that, that was the one on his trailer as far as on, but I, I disagree with oh, that. Oh no, I was hearing everybody say it. I like literally really? I, my mom said it too. She was like, Who played Maui? And I was like, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, and she was like, I don't think he can sing. And I was like, that guy, that, that, I guess he can't. Well, I mean, I think he mostly sing talks. Yeah. Of You're welcome. But it's still pretty enjoyable. I mean, like, especially the, the rapping part near the end. The, the, the... I mean, I think there's, I think, I think we said it before, I think there's ways that you could sing talk and it could still be good. Yeah. I just but, wonder. like, with, like, Emma, Emma Watson as Belle, mm -hmm. when she started singing... I have, to, I have to put air quotes on. <laughs> I have to put air quotes. I'm sorry, man. It you could tell like it was auto tune. Yeah. I I'm I, sorry. <laughs> I just don't understand why you do it when like, and I, I guess I could say this about all of the remakes, but I just don't understand. It's a beautiful looking movie. 
it's pretty recent still. It had some issues, like, you know, Moana's not the best of the Disney movies by far. But She's getting a TV series. Mm -hmm. She's supposed to be getting a TV series. Yeah, her and Tiana are both getting a TV series. I thought that was going to be a cool continuation for those characters. I don't understand why you do this. I don't understand where the... Like, there's no artsy reason to do Moana again. It just kind of feels like... And again, I could say this about all the remakes. We want money, and we think this will give us money. But this one, more than any other, just feels like, yeah, we want the money, so we're making it. <laughs> It's like it's like Mr. Krabs from like the the first SpongeBob movie is like, why did you open up the Krusty Krab too? Money. I like money. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty much Disney in a, in a nutshell. Although if they... and this and this is coming from someone that's a huge fan of Disney. Mm. Do you, Do you have anything to add, Jack? I can see the shame all over your face. <laughs> Deception. Disgrace. I agree. I'm thinking. Okay, yeah, you. Two actors in these costumes on a practical raft in a big pool, sure, maybe with a volume, maybe with a blue screen, maybe it's in a harbor, whatever. To f film all that stuff, yeah. Th that would be cool. Visually, but, like, yeah, why do you do this? What, what are you going to change to improve it? Because all the changes I can think of that you're going to do for this live action film will detract. Like, are, are they gonna? Are they still gonna do, shiny and Tamatoa? We said earlier. Oh yeah, oh, like shiny would be. It would be like an impressive set piece and sequence. Yeah. But in my head, I'm like, okay. Sebastian, though. Yeah, yeah, you're right. If, actually, if that's if that's what if if that's the CG crab that we're getting, I don't need a massive version of that. But <laughs> equally, like a big monstrous crab. Um, again, I'll recommend. Um. Love and oh, it's not, yeah, I think it's, I think it's called Love and Monsters on Netflix. Mm -hmm. was, I, I, that's, that was one of my favorite films that year, and the climax of that is like, ah, oh, here's this big like mutant like giant crab monster, and it's not and the details like the mouth and everything. It's a monster, but yeah, give us give us a because coconut crabs are fucking scary. Yes, they are. <laughs> give us give us that would be a great like scary sequence, even if you don't have them singing. Mm. That that'd be cool. Oh, but I like. But like, Shiny. realistically, they're, they're probably not gonna do that. No. Are they? Are they gonna do the Kakamora, the wee coconut people? Yeah, Kakamora. And yeah. Then, and then like Taka and Tafiti, <clears throat> like the other mythical beings. Like just, how is that? I, I'm with you. It just feels like a bad idea. Like you're thinking about all these big things in Moana, like the the lava lady. And of course, mm. like the the plant lady, she ends up turning into. I don't know their names. I'll be real. But <laughs> take off, take yeah. yeah. I I think that like, if they can pull it off, it would probably be kind of neat. But it, 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 that's kind of the reason I say don't do this. Even if it's really good, it just kind of feels like, well, all right, you made a really good movie again that you just made the other day. <laughs> Like, yeah. I, I, I don't... It, it feels too fresh. It just feels too fresh. I'm, I'm worried still, that it, like, it'll feel part, like... I'm still, I'm still surprised they haven't done Frozen yet, considering Frozen is one it's, of... It's, it's coming. It's coming. They, they just haven't announced it yet. <laughs> like, Disney's, like, massive juggernauts. It's even getting a third movie. Honestly, if you want to stop Frozen from coming, don't go see Moana. Because that that might send them the message that, okay, they don't want the recent ones. I don't think you could do anything to stop the light. Yeah, it's, it's you know, you, get, you, got, you, got, you got parents and kids. If got... Frozen 2 had tanked, maybe? I, I'm well, just... Frozen 2 wasn't going to tank. If so. Moana makes, like, no money at all, they might take it as, okay, we shouldn't do the recent ones yet. It'll still happen eventually. Ten years down the line, I guarantee you there will be a Frozen one somewhere within that time. But mm. I, I don't know. I don't want them to do Frozen. That I I don't want Let It Go Fever to come back. I don't <laughs> want it to come back. <laughs> I, ha I had Let It Go Fever for the longest time, and I think it's resurfacing. Everyone did, except for <laughs> me. 
and I had to deal. <laughs> and then they had in Into the Unknown, mm. and then Show Yourself. Those weren't nearly as bad as Let It Go, though. And no, Let It Go was I love, everywhere. I loved the meme before Frozen 2 came out, and I was, I was kind of in this boat for Frozen 2. It was, ah, oh, got my tickets, can't wait to go see Frozen 2. For Brendan Urie's version of Into the Unknown in the credits, I don't care about the rest of them. <laughs> I mean, I love Idina Menzel because I love Broadway, so, I mean... Yeah, yeah. Alright, last two. Here we go. First, Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> we're ending on Nightmare Before Christmas, because fundamentally I think that's the worst one. But, before we do that, we gotta talk about what might be the second worst one. Robin Hood. The Animal Robin Hood is getting a live-action remake. Or, as Jack said, it's probably not going to be live-action. Or will it? <laughs> this is such Wait, a confusing the idea. The fox? The fox? Fox? That is the one that is getting rebooted, yes. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Money. <laughs> Ch uh, Jack, you've seen... You seem perplexed. Please let me know how you're feeling right now. I mean... Furry community, rejoice! <laughs> <laughs> they can actually Good rejoice problem, because Zootopia 2 is coming out. Oh uh, yeah, Zootopia 2. Yeah. Okay, I think... So... I, I'm just running through my head. I'm just visualizing all these different ways for Robin Hood to look. I have a strict rule about invoking this name in videos, but we're gonna have to invoke it yet again. It's gonna look like cats, right? It has to look kinda like cats. I so, mean, it's either maybe, gonna be... Maybe, maybe Robin Hood could look like that one fox from Chronicles of Narnia? No, it, That's it, what I was thinking he's of. He's gotta wield a bow, though, so he's gotta stand up on two legs like the original. Well, yeah, in but... Case, looks like um, from Chronicles of Narnia kind of, as long as they don't do what Ilvis did with what does the fox say. Yeah, I was going to say, that, that, that's your three options for a live action. Is cats, what does the fox say, or um, yeah, there are no actual humans in it. But again, for the fox, I'm picturing um, Peter Rabbit, the James Corden like film. Mm -hmm. Because that, that has like various woodland creatures and stuff, and it has an upright, like walking, talking fox who like wears like a suit coat and stuff. I don't like, yeah, yeah, that, but person sized, and they'll all be person sized. And, and then I is the long song gonna look like blue? I hope so. <laughs> I don't, he's brown anyway. <laughs> Just I mean, use I the mean, same character more than one out of hats. I remember during the earlier years, you know, Disney was using their some of the animation on other mm -hmm. movies. Yeah, so that again, that, that's an interesting story um, to go into. Um, basically, after Walt Disney's passing, they just reused a lot of stuff because the studio was sort of in a bit of a low at the time. Where it's like, yeah. So, yeah, no, it is just a lot of little John is just traced blue. Yeah. I... But that's fine. You're tracing your own work. It's, it's You're not stealing from anything. You're just re re recycling. I just I don't understand how you do it correctly, you know? Because, yeah. like, I'm... my my suggestion, and I know someone's going to be pissed at me for saying this, but if you're going to do the remake, if you're going to do a live, if you're going to do a live action remake of Robin Hood, here's a twist: Why don't you actually just make it live action and use actual people? Because I got to be real, I don't want to see <laughs> what these could look like. Because if they're bad. They're going to be really bad. <laughs> what does the fox say? <laughs> like, oh my god, that could be awful. <laughs> and I, I, I like the original story of Robin Hood. I'm not saying it's a bad Disney movie at all. But the reason you can do stuff like, oh, let's do Robin Hood with a bunch of animals is because it's a cartoon. You can, like, do that with a cartoon. The second you go, oh, let's make this live action, you have fundamentally missed the whole reason you could do this. <laughs> Thank you for reiterating my argument from the start of this video. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, we can apply that to all this, though. Yeah, I get yeah. that. But like, yeah, no, I, I'm glad that that's just bookending that. There, there's one or two where it kind of makes sense, though. Like with Atlantis, the Last Empire, yeah. they were all humans. Yes, you can still do that. I think I still I lump this one in again with um, Atlantis and whatever the other one was that I lumped into this group. <laughs> I've forgotten already. <laughs> in the yeah, this is is not one of their headliner Disney films. Mm. It is a bit more of a cult classic sort of one. So I think, yeah, I'm fine with them. This is one that I'm fine with the premise of them doing. But the execution, I have no clue how you do it. I think how I would do... I don't think I would do it. I think no. I'd refuse the... I think I'd refuse the paycheck. <laughs> I think... The best thing I can think of, and even then this isn't a good solution, is... Yeah, live action, just have actual actors on set and everything. But you do it like, um, you always see like anime characters and people at conventions with just like the animal ears. Mm. Furry. Like, ro he's Robin Hood, but it's just a person but with the hat that's also like fox ears. Uh, uh, King John has like a mane of hair. Mm. Like, things, like humanified versions of the characters. Oh, the, the the snake have the snake be really like grime a worm tongue. Now you see, I I, I think most people wouldn't like that, but I'm actually with you on that, Jack. I, I think if they Disney bounded some of these guys in a convincing then, way, it could. Because then, be shock and horror, it would be a live action remake. Whoa. Oh. Oh. <laughs> And it would be funny, too, if they still had, like, subtle ways to reference, like, the animal side. Like, if straight up King John did have, like, a giant mane of hair, that would be funny. That would look funny. Uh, li li little John at one point is, like, eating honey out of a pot or something. Or may maybe for, like, fighting, he's got, like, bear claws or something. Like, I, I don't know. You, you could have fun with it. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not opposed to this if they do a live action remake and I cannot stress that enough I'm just imagining clearly you... someone at Disney hasn't received my notes I'm, I'm just imagining you have Walt Disney sitting on a chair in a corner and you're just going this is what a bear looks like in live action this is what a bear looks like when you animate it with CGI do you understand that these are not the same thing? <laughs> no, not, not even visually, because again, Baloo in the Jungle Book looks really good. The lions in the Lion King do not. They do yeah, not. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I don't know, because, like, I think I said before, like, I, I remember seeing some YouTuber for the Lion King where they reanimated them to look like the animated film. Yeah, they just changed the faces. Yeah, I I actually liked that, but yeah. maybe because they thought it was not realistic enough and it wasn't it didn't look right. So I guess they went to the realistic approach, but it looked too realistic. Mm. Where they don't I think have it looked, I think it looked pr pretty realistic. Some of the fur and stuff's a bit off, is it? It looked realistic. The problem is, real lions can't emote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the big issue. Show me a real lion and have like a trickle of water coming out of his eye. I'm like, I, I guess it's crying. <laughs> I guess it's in a bad mood. I, I, I can't. It is. Is it growling or is it smiling right now? When, when they show their teeth, they, they, they don't have the musculature to smile. It's just baring its teeth one way or the other. You don't know. <laughs> Yeah, when when Simba screams, it just kind of looks like he's meowing. Meow. <laughs> he's like, no. I, I could do more motion with a hand puppet. Isn't that right? Smile. <laughs> so let's talk about it. Let's let's talk about Nightmare Before Christmas, getting a live action remake. <laughs> Jack. That was off screen, Jack. You want to do it again? I do not. Oh. I got it on camera, don't worry. Oh, oh this is sad. 
Drink up, Jack. I'm I'm on my way right after. We'll talk about this, and then I'll get blasted too. Oh, <laughs> also, you know, Jack. That's not Jack. Jack. Yeah. And we're about to talk about Jack. Oh, and the movie will be Jack shit. So that's like four Jacks. <laughs> <laughs> They're um, gonna jack this one up. So when my friend Pat told me about this, I screamed on camera and went, "What? That is my reaction." <laughs> You can't do this! Apparently Johnny Depp might be playing Jack Skellington, which I why guess is okay surprised? casting, but... Why, you... am I, why am I not surprised? Well, here's I'm, the thing. I'm, I'm not surprised. I am. I am surprised by that, and I'm kind of glad to hear that. Okay. Well, I like that. I think that's okay. Here's the thing, though. Jack's gonna look like shit. The mayor's gonna look like shit. How do you do this good? <laughs> How do you do this good? Mike, is Tim Burton going to be involved? By the way, Disney, he listen. Is me. directing? He, I well, he didn't so. direct the, the. No, he did not. No, he did not. A lot of people, a lot of people get that wrong. Listen, Disney, I understand you like CG. I understand there are some characters you got to do it with. I get it. Do Sally practical, please, dear God, do Sally practical, because if they do, that could look really cool. And I've seen cosplays where people get pretty close to Sally practically. So if they don't CG Sally at all, she could look fucking awesome at the very least. She's the one I'm rooting for. The mayor's gonna look like shit. I don't know how you do Oogie Boogie well in CG. Wouldn't it make sense to have Lock, Shock, and Barrel be just regular kids, not yeah. CGI? I think there'll be some of the yeah. easier ones to do. Just get some kids I, I in think masks. You don't CG many of them, I think. So, in, in my head, I'm just taking Johnny Depp as the Mad Hatter and putting him in a striped suit and without a hat. That, that's what I'm picturing for Jack Skellington. I'm like, okay, cool. I, I, I can see that for the face. Okay, you're not, you're not like getting rid of the eyes and stuff. I'm assuming he has... He just he's maybe more corpse like than necessarily a skeleton, perhaps. I, I'm like, okay, I, I can see that working. I think the thing that like turns me off to this so much is if they do attempt the CG route, first of all, it's just not gonna work. Second of all, I I think of Jack Skellington, they have this Jack Skellington puppet at at Disney World, and it looks so good with his big long arms and his like cylindrical body like it looks like jack brought to life it really does and i'm thinking about if you tried to do that in real life just how awful it would look just how bad those giant arms would look that being said i i did actually say this in the stream where i found out if burden is directing it and burden is really <laughs> devoted to the set design and if we could get some of these people to be puppets, like if, if there's a mayor puppet or an animatronic, maybe that could work. But if it's like a normal guy in a suit whose head turns around and it's blue, that's going to look dumb. That's not as creative. They, the biggest thing with Nightmare Before Christmas it's a, is it's a giant showcase of creative designs and creepy creatures. And if they can't nail that, it's not Nightmare Before Christmas to me. Because Nightmare Before Christmas is enjoyed both on Halloween and Christmas, so it's gonna... Yeah, no. I... I just... I don't see this working out, unfortunately. I can't... And, I can't think of a way it works. I truly can't. And I believe it'll be 30 years since Nightmare Before Christmas came out. I think in June or July, it's gonna be 30 Guys? years. Guys? Mm -hmm. But... Is this actually happening? What? Yes, I this looked it up. This was announced on April 1st. Do you think it was a Disney prank? This was posted on April 1st. Oh, no. Is yeah. this actually happening? It might not. Here's the thing. I, I, like, I looked it up just to be sure because I was like, is this real? Because I heard about it from a friend. This, If it's an April Fool's joke, then treat this as a, a warning. To the future but i did look it up and a lot of the news sites are reporting it as real so like i'm not 100 percent sure if it is fake thank jesus <laughs> and if it are is you, fake, are you, are you getting are you getting this from inside magic 
I did. Yeah, that was the first Google result and checking around. Inside Magic is also where I got the list of all of them. Yeah, Inside Magic ends with, also if you made it this far, we applaud you. Have a happy April Fool's Day. Well, we got tricked. I Maybe. got tricked, and then I Maybe. tricked you. I, yeah, I Maybe. think this isn't happening. Thank God. Well, here's <laughs> the thing. If this isn't happening, then Disney, hold on to this. <laughs> Don't make it happen. Well, fandom.com, live action remake, guess. Yeah, I think maybe it might be fake, though. Seth MacFarlane as the mayor? Yeah, I think. Seth MacFarlane as the mayor? That that would be terrible. <laughs> Songs, different. This is a really good. The 1993 joke. film? What? Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think anything is legit. Nah. I think, this was, I think this is a big April Fool's. Well, that is good. Although it blows my mind that that was the April Fool's joke and Robin Hood is real then. <laughs> but what I think is the biggest takeaway from this is that we were not surprised that this happened. Yeah. We thought they were actually doing this. The bar they have set is so low that we thought, yeah, it's believable, but that Disney would sink this low, that Disney would do this. Well, the fact that they're doing Moana kind of signifies that at this point, nothing is off the table. And in my head, the reason I screamed when I found out about it is because I generally believe that if anything was off the table, it should be Nightmare Before Christmas. Because I don't think that, first of all, I don't think it needs to be remade. It's a classic. Second of all, I don't think you could make a remake that could even be good. I, I don't know how you could touch that. So, like, I'm very happy to learn this is fake. And honestly, chat, you may think, oh, Neil, it's so silly. You accidentally talked about the fake one. Can we not praise the fact that this is fake? <laughs> can we not can we, celebrate can we that? Appreciate no. I, I don't think so. Because, again... We believed it. We thought it was real. We didn't question it. We didn't second guess it. We were like, shit, they're doing this. I think oh right. my god, they're... Whoa, what are they... No, we were like, for fuck's sake, guys. I mean, you're right. They have set such a low bar at this point. Oh, another movie I was surprised that they haven't announced yet, which I'm hoping they probably shouldn't. Princess and the Frog. I, I almost don't think they will. Do a live action remake of that? Truthfully, I would kill to see friends on the other side in live action. I would kind of kill to see that. I I really wouldn't. <laughs> oh, with all the voodoo dolls and the drums and all the cool smoke and the fucking awesome lights. Yeah, but like the card tricks and stuff. Like you're not doing that in live action. Oh yeah, you're right. Like yeah, they'd have but to. The shadow is like okay, that's gonna be a CGI shadow. Mm -hmm. No, I I I think you see in my head. I'd love to see. I, I'm going to Google it and keep David ever dressed up as Dr. Facilier. I, I don't think so. You know, like, think, think of how Facilier moves. Think of... No. It's very you know, now that I'm thinking about it, actually, I'd like to see it as a Broadway spectacular. Like, I'd like to see it on Broadway. Sure. That could work. That could work. Because I, I know a lot of people were saying that but the main problem with Princess and the Frog was Tiana was a frog mm. for, like, two-thirds of the movie. And she shouldn't have been a frog. Well, to, to kind of jump off what Jack has said about how low the bar is, we're going to do our plugs now, but after we're done with the plugs, we're going to talk about what we hope never gets a remake. <laughs> Just briefly, we'll shotgun it. <coughs> so, let's, uh, you know what? I'll go first. I will plug myself. I never go first. This is the first time I will go first. Hello. Hi. I'm first. <laughs> uh, Add this to the list of all the times Neil's gone first. Yeah, yeah. I've gone first a couple times. Uh, hey, uh, hi, my name is First, and I'm Neil. You can find me on Twitch. Uh, <laughs> uh, we we got a couple things coming out right now. Um, we're we're still doing Sally Face. We're still doing Luigi's Mansion. Uh, having a bunch of fun with that game. We're gonna do a lot of Nintendo games in the future. Um, 
I think we have one just about to come out about a game called Judgment. That should be dropping sometimes this week. And we do have a couple other videos in the works. Uh, I don't want to talk about them too much or hint more than I've already hinted, but there's gameplay stuff coming. There's uh, more reviews coming. There's, uh, there's some stuff. Don't worry about it. But yeah, if you want to watch all of the the gaming early, go over to twitch.tv slash drneeltopus. That way you can see that first. <laughs> um, Jack, you want to go next? Sure, yeah. Hello everyone out there on the internet. I am Jack of All Trades. You can find me at Jack of All Trades on YouTube. Um, you'll, I'm sure we'll have it linked in the description of this video. Uh, when is this video going out? Today, probably. <laughs> Okay, in that case, later today, slash tomorrow, depending on It'll time zones. It'll either be for, today or tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, time zones for people. For me today, for you guys, probably tomorrow, um, I've got two videos going out. We've got my reaction to the last two pieces of the My Hero Academia anime um, that are currently available, mm -hmm. being World Heroes Mission, the third movie, and The Departure OVA, which is a prequel to that movie that is not currently available in English. They've not dubbed it, they've not subbed it. I had to find a fan translation in order to watch it. Um, but both of those, the movie's the big thing, because that's, I am, it's the third movie, it's the final movie so far. Reaction to both of them are going up today, slash tomorrow. Uh, and then as we finish this, I'll cut up My Hero Academia, which is fantastic. Uh, then I'm going to be taking a week off just to catch my breath after finally finishing this job before diving into Maiden Abyss, which is one of my favorite shows. It's it's this beautiful series. The music by Kevin Penkin is phenomenal. The animation, the story. It's to, to, to pitch it to you guys. Mm -hmm. There's this hole. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the ocean, there's this island. It's a bit, a bit like the crest of like a volcano. There's a and hole a in hole. the bottom of the sea. It's above the sea. It's an island, and other people have come to this island and built like a town around the crater. And you, it, it's just a hole. And people explore. Okay, the first, there's the several layers to it. It's kind of video gamey. It's like, oh, here's this, and there's all the different creatures that you find at the different layers of this whole new ecosystem that's been discovered. The thing is, you can go down. But there's a toll for coming back up. Oh? It, the, the, the deeper you go, the more physical strain there is to come back up. So in the first layer, oh, if, if you try to go up, oh, okay, you'll, you'll feel a bit nauseous, you might throw up. You, you go down deeper, okay, you're going to be sick. You go down deeper, you're going to be bleeding. You go down deeper, it gets worse and worse the deeper you go. Mm -hmm. And the main character finds out, oh, their, their mom went off exploring. And attached to a balloon, a, a letter for them asking them to come find them. Is so they're going thing? down to the bottom of this thing that no one has ever found the bottom of. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a fantastic premise. Season one was amazing. I cried so much at the finale of it. The character designs. I, I I loved season one so much I, that I put off. They did they did the first season, and then they did a movie as a sequel instead of like another season. And now the new season is a sequel to the movie. They're not, they're not like redoing or retreading any territory. They just keep going. And I I deliberately put off watching the movie for three years because I knew when I watched it that'd be it done and there'd be nothing else. <laughs> I, I didn't want that to happen. I wanted there to be more in the abyss to keep going on this adventure. And then they announced season two, and season two happened, so I watched the movie, and yeah, it made me cry again. I, I it think... is, it's a beautiful show. I think and I'm... I am going to have a box of tissues on standby for every episode. I think I'm going to watch your reaction to episode one, gauge it, and then if I like it, I might be like, okay, I'm going to go get into this now. <laughs> Okay, in that case, I will plug my reaction to the movie, because that is currently up on my channel. Go watch that instead, instead of my reaction to the first episode of the second season of a show. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, I thought I thought you were saying you were going to start... Okay. Oh, no, I, I, I watched season one 
years ago, I think my, I did a reaction to the finale of season one. And I cried. <laughs> and then years later, just last year, I did a reaction to the movie. I see. It's, it's, it's a phenomenal show. But it's one that I can't recommend to everyone just because it does get pretty dark. Oh, you know I love dark shit, though, so I'm up for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the plan for my channel. Again, it's going to be pretty anime-centric. But now that my hero's done, we're going to do Maiden Abyss, and then after that, I don't have any plans. I'm going to need to figure out something else to do. Probably some more video essay stuff. I haven't done much video essay stuff in a while. Cher, uh, would you like to plug? Hello, everybody. It's me, Cher, or Cherise. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as my second YouTube channel, Share Your Creations. I just uploaded today my favorite doll lines, because I love dolls. They're really cute. So, um, part one is uploaded today. I might be able to do part two probably near the end of the week before I go to Comic-Con, because I'm going to meet Tara Strong, hopefully, and I'm super excited. Yay! Um, as far as future videos goes, I'm literally about three weeks till the end of my semester, so I'm probably going to focus on that first. And then I have a, I work at the school, so I'm probably going to be very exhausted. But I found out how to do tier lists, so maybe mm -hmm. I might do a tier list or two. To what? I don't know, but I found out how to record myself doing a tier list. I don't know if I can show my face or not, but I figured out a way to do a tier list, so I'm so excited. <laughs> and, um... I really want to do my top 20 Britney Spears songs because I love Britney Spears, but I don't know. I don't know if I have it ready yet. And then for the longest time, I wanted to do Nickelodeon stuff because I, I love Disney, but I want to take a break from Disney. So possibility, I'm not saying yes, but possibility in June, because there's 30 days, is going to be Nickelodeon month. So... But it's not going to be full fleshed out reviews. It's going to be like little itty bitty thoughts on it. So I'm going to pick 30 shows slash movies that I can find that are available that I don't have to go on Paramount Plus and sign up for, which I guess my best luck will be Netflix. So <laughs> fingers, crossed, fingers crossed for Netflix and Hulu. They can be my saving grace. But yeah, I'll pick like, obviously I'll pick some of the older stuff because mm. nostalgic but I'll see if I can try to find some newer stuff and just share like my little mini thoughts because otherwise it's going to be over 20 minutes long and I don't have enough power and storage for that so probably each one for each day is going to be like roughly 5 to 10 minutes that, sh that should be good enough and then maybe at the end I could do a tier list for Nickelodeon shows I don't know but yeah stay tuned for part 2 of my doll lines I have no idea what I'm going to do for May. Maybe I'll do a tier list or two. And in June, possibly Nickelodeon month. Yay! Alright. So, before we end the video, let's just very quickly, shotgun style, let's go through and say what we think would be the worst thing to get a live-action remake. Not counting the ones that we know are going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, Cher, did you think of one? Do you want to go first? Dude, I texted you this on, on a freaking Instagram. I don't know, but I, anything is possible. There's one thing that I learned today. Mm. Nobody's safe. None of them. No, nobody's safe. They're going to do Frozen. They're probably going to do gonna Tank. They're going to do Frozen. <laughs> They're going to probably do Princess and the Frog. I would be shocked if they do Pocahontas, because that's going to be... Mm, I, that's going to be... That's going to be problematic. I think one of the big ones they shouldn't do is Coco. I don't see a way you can do Coco in live action and keep it as good. I don't want. Thus far, they haven't touched any Pixar films, so I feel oh, like Coco those. Pixar. Say... Yeah, Coco's Pixar. For some reason, yeah, I didn't Pixar. think Coco was Pixar. All right. It's okay, but I <laughs> which guess... is why again, if we ignore Coco, we ignore Ernesto de la Cruz, and thus Mother Gothel is the most recent good Disney film. <laughs> yep. And then, like Great Mouse Detective, I don't want them to do that. It's it's mm. it's really sweet. The... Uh, the big one for me, the one I'm very much like, don't fucking touch it, 
is Emperor's New Groove. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, it's just, that movie is pure, that movie is hilarious, that movie, it's a miracle that movie works as well as it does, and it works incredibly well. Don't I'm fuck with it. I haven't done anything with uh, Treasure Planet or Brother Bear. Now, Treasure Planet could be really cool, because, mm. like, if you do the CG world well, it could look really awesome. It, I, it's... I think you try your hardest not to do that, and you go Star Wars with it. Mm -hmm. you, you go as, mu as much practical as you can. That would be neat. I agree with I don't, that. I don't know how I feel about Brother Bear, though. Although there are definitely some things that would have to be CG, like that oh. little goo creature couldn't be <laughs> practical. Yeah. Yeah. You got one Jack to end us off on? Uh, I'm looking through just their list of films. Can we just say all of them? And I, th I thought of this, and I'm checking there's nothing else that I want to say above it. Even... I'm surprised they haven't done all of your company yet. I can see that being direct to Disney Plus, kind of like the Lady and the Tramp one. Yeah. Because Oliver and Company is already like an adaptation, like it's it's their version of Oliver Twist. I I I, I kind of can't see them doing a live action one. I heard rumors that there's going to be a Goofy movie live action. I've Dear heard God, about no. that too. I don't know how you could do that in live. Imagine a live action Goofy. That that's just weird to even think about. That's nightmare. Or or, or, or if they go the Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers route, you know. Maybe. Maybe maybe that's the one I don't want them to do. Don't do Goofy Movie. Mm. There, I picked something. Goofy Movie. Yeah. Don't do Goofy Movie. <laughs> no, looking, looking at just like theatrical animated releases, mm. I think... And I feel weird saying this, but it's the one that came to mind beyond like the untouchables of a Goofy Movie and Nightmare Before Christmas. I, I think one that they shouldn't do because it it doesn't work as is, and doing it in live action is not going to fix it, mm -hmm. is Chicken Little. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I, I have such a soft spot in my heart for Chicken Little. I Are love that movie. <laughs> Only because of Rem's It's the End of the World as we know it. It's like my favorite song from them, and I... I love that part of the movie. Other than that, I don't really care about the movie as much as I used to. to I'm surprised they haven't done, like, Bolt or Meet the Robinsons. Meet the Robinsons could be good, maybe? <laughs> I don't know about Bolt, though. Meet the Robinsons is just a fun story. I'd, I'd love to see it revisited. See, that's the thing. I would love to see M Meet the Robinsons remade. I just don't think I'd love to see it remade like all of these other remakes have been doing. <laughs> yeah. Don't do Goofy Movie. Please, do not do Goofy Movie. <laughs> Don't do Goofy Movie. <laughs> I mean, for me, if Emperor's New Groove gets remade, they've already failed. Just right out the gate. But, mm. thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have appreciated our deliverance, and if you have not, well, I don't know what to do. How should we end this video? Like at this stuff, isn't it? <laughs> Disney's so desperate for number one hints. <laughs> the fuck! The fuck! The fuck is all this? <laughs> the fuck! What will He's be... always miss. <laughs> These bad movies show... I don't know. I can't think of when one. Will it stop? When will it end? Before another victim is claimed again, your company is crushing dreams by all of these remakes. Your company's <laughs> terrible CG. Quit making this shit. <laughs>